the chaos reign. Chaos reign presents. What do you bring to the table with special guest Dr. Black? Broadcasts January the 17th, 2022. Enjoy. Solutions.com are the views of Tyrone Thompson and do not reflect the views of TalkRealSolutions.com, YouTube, or etc. The content here belongs to Talk Real Solutions and its many contributors. Views and opinions expressed by all contributors belong to them and not TalkRealSolutions.com or Tyrone Thompson, the host, or etc. All data and information provided on the site is for informational purposes only. Talk Real Solutions makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, correctness, suitability, or validity of any information on this site and will not be liable for any errors, omissions, or delays in this information or any losses, injuries, or damages arising from its display or use. All information is provided on an as-is basis. In the world where there's crime, corruption, violence, murder, rape, 
that and all forms of atrocity that plague the world in which we live today. What you're witnessing, we are living in a state of chaos and taking more greater or extreme chaos to restore the order in which the world we live in today. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. What's good? What's good? Um, this is going to be a very touchy subject. And I mean touchy in a way where this might hurt and get into a lot of females' feelings. But nonetheless, chaos loves you at the end of the day, and it's all for the love. You know, but before I give you the title of today's stream, let me do this. Um, I would like everybody to go to talkrealsolutions.com. On the website, you'll see the list of black established owned banks. And I think there's like less than 30 banks established still in the United States. And always, you know, we advocate here on this side of this channel is it's always good to start a black owned business. Now, I'm not sure what type of black owned business you want to start or get yourself into, but nonetheless, try to create one for yourself to hopefully to not only push the needle, but to hopefully pass down something to your loved ones and your future children. So if you did not, if you still hesitate to start one, I would, I would say just start one anyway and see where it goes. You know, we always advocate multiple stream of income, but, you know, that's not a story. Um, what else am I to say? Also, you also follow Talk with Susan on Facebook as well. And let me make sure. You also follow... Okay, I sound good about that. Sorry about that. You can also follow the channel on Facebook titled Talk Real Solutions on Facebook. So, like always, um, like the page on Facebook and you get invited to a private chat on Facebook. And trust me, you will love it because the chat room and the DMs be getting real interesting and popping. Trust me, I've had a lot of laughs in the DM part of the um, Facebook side of TRS. So, like the page and you get invited to the chat room today. Also, Talk Real Solutions on YouTube as well. Same name, moniker, Talk Real Solutions. It's the one with the line. Um, you can subscribe to the channel as well to catch maybe um, this broadcast and other broadcasts on TRS side of things. And last but not least, subscribe to Chaos Rain channel. We're still pushing to get to 1K subscribers, and we're going to get there. Uh, and we're going to get there one way or the other. So when you find Chaos Rain on YouTube, make sure you hit the red button in the top bell for notifications for live streams or uploads on the Chaos Rain channel. And also, follow me on Twitter at Chaos Rain 7 and add me as a friend now on Facebook, Eric Rain on Facebook. And that's all I'm probably going to lay out for y'all. But we're not going to hold more time. It's time to start this party started. Tonight's stream is titled Chaos Ray presents, what do you bring to the table? And today's special guest is a returning guest, one of my unique friends and the one person that I kind of respect now, and I'm glad I came across this brother. Um, I project this man's going to do wonderful things, and he's going to change the world and how we look at business and relationships. Trust me, you hear it first on Chaos Ray channel on this 2020 year and counting. So no further ado, if you dare press star six one. All right, people, I'd like y'all to give you a round of applause for the return of the one and only Paco, AKA Dr. Black. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good evening, it's your boy, Dr. Black. Good. How are you, oh, Brother what's Chaos? Good? What's good, Dr. Black? What is good? Brother, you know, I had to do this one. We had to do a subject on this because if you remember when we first had our first encounter on Chaos Rain Channel on the Terrace side of things, I think back in 20... Was it 2020? It might be 2020. I got to check the dates, but yeah, it was like almost, yeah. um, almost two years. Well, actually, I think it's going to be about two years in a couple months. But nonetheless, when we had you the first time, we dealt with 
how to a man could adjust in relationships in the 21st century. I think we lay out methods and strategies how we can go about if you're a black male or any man in general that's over the age of 18 and over 35, that there are ways you could adjust to the new environment we're in in the West in regards to relationships and how you could be not only effective, but how you could potentially thrive if you strategize and lay out what you really want as a man. So if y'all not familiar, I would advise go back to that broadcast. That was one of, I think, one of our better broadcasts out of all the broadcasts we have done so far. I think I'm still getting some views on it. Not much, but when I look at the numbers, that's mostly what they like the most. But nonetheless, you know, you know how we are when it comes to relationships. So. But on that note, on the title of what you bring to the table. Now, Dr. Black, why is so intrigued or so important that a man, depending on his financial situation or where he is in life, has to really lay out this question in regards to, you know, he's dealing with the opposite sex on the other end of the table. The floor is yours. Oh, oh, oh. Before we so, go into it, I don't know if you want to give a quick introduction because I want people, if they listen to first time, know a little bit about you before we do this. If you want to go give okay. a quick insight. Yeah, we always do All right, so... Um, it's your boy, Dr. Black. Uh, I am on um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and a lot more recently on TikTok, at Dr. Black, B-R-B-L-A-Q-U-E. And um, I care about relationships. Uh, my background is that I'm an immigrant from South America. Uh, <clears throat> Guyana, South America, I got my U.S. citizenship after serving almost a decade in the U.S. Navy. I uh, graduated university in 2013 with a Bachelor of Science in uh, Technical Management. And I have been asking myself for, for over a decade, what values do you need in order to get married? And in asking myself that question, I was single until uh, recently. I've only been married about a little over three years. And I... Uh, I discovered and asked myself that question, how I could find a pathway to success in relationships, and I'm implementing that success. And I decided to write down my thoughts and create a book that will hopefully help other people have success in romance. And the first thing I realized years ago is that what we think about re romance and how we go execute, how we approach relationships is where we have a problem. The, the first biggest problem is how we go get into a romance. A lot of people are confused and misguided and and how we're getting into romance and it's called romanticism or one person or some people have dubbed it romanticism. Romanticism is this uh, myth that you got to get into relationships uh, for love and love is going to see you all the way through. And that came in the Victorian era when uh, a few years after the Enlightenment, where writers started to explore uh, the average person getting with people outside of their means. So you would have a peasant who would uh, run away from her, uh, her family. Uh, she'd have a magical fairy godmother send her to a ball and go to the ball and somehow convince a prince that she was the greatest thing ever, and she turned back into a peasant, but he'd still love her anyway, and they'd get married and live happy ever after. And that kind of concept of uh, Cinderella and the glass slipper just, just permeated the, 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 the culture, and a lot of people started to consider making their own decisions. So prior to romanticism, prior to the last hundred years of, of Western society, your parents used to choose your mate. That was standard procedure for thousands of years. Your parents would choose you a suitable mate. And people in the same class would merge their families. So kings and queens would merge with kings and queens. Uh, noblemen would merge with noblemen. And peasants would merge with peasants. You'd find someone in your class, in your group, and marry your son or your daughter off to them, get a farm, have children to perpetuate the farm. Romanticism said you don't have to do that. Let's let's pick our own relationships and do it for love. Well, the problem with doing it for love 
as we've been trying to do for the last hundred years is love is not sustainable. Love in of itself is what I say in my book, Like the Tide, love comes in and goes back out. Love is an emotion. And for people who are saying, oh, this is ridiculous, love is always, love is permanent, imagine, as I say in my book, imagine your favorite dish. I hope everyone listening does this. Chaos, you do this too. Imagine your favorite dish. Let's say it's your favorite dish is filet mignon. And you go out and you have filet mignon tonight and it's exquisite. The bacon wrapping is perfectly crisp. The meat is perfectly tender and it just tastes absolutely superb. All is $200 worth every bite. And then imagine that because you love filet mignon, everything you eat after that filet mignon tastes like filet mignon. So your dessert tastes like filet mignon. Your breakfast cereal tastes like filet mignon. Your salad for lunch the next day. And for weeks and weeks and weeks, everything you ate tastes like filet mignon. How long would it take for you to start hating the taste of your absolute favorite dish, filet mignon? It wouldn't take very long. And that is what we're trying to say is love. We're trying to say that in a relationship, all you need is love. You don't need common sense. You don't need respect. You don't need uh, a good job or any of that. You just need love, and love is just going to do it. Well, you don't want to be in love every second of every day, no more than you want to taste filet mignon, everything you eat. When you drink water, you want to taste like water. When you eat ice cream, you want to taste like ice cream. You don't want to taste like filet mignon. No more than you're going to be in love with your partner, man or woman, for every second of every day. So outside of love, what are you going to have in a relationship? And we skip over all the practical, intelligent, basic things that you need to do to make a relationship work straight to love. So we had good sex. We're in love with each other now. And all of a sudden, that's enough. And that never was enough. And it never will be enough. And we try to build our society on this concept of just love being enough. And it's led us to over 50% divorce rate. We're a steaming towards 60% divorce rate. That means one out of every two people you meet have been divorced or will be divorced. So romanticism has failed us. It's failed us greatly. And so I went back to the beginning and I went back and I said, what are good reasons to get into a relationship? And the good reasons were always the same good reason. Compatibility, respect, the similar goals in life. And when our parents used to pick our mates, a hundred years ago and the previous thousands of years before, they saw those basic common sense things in our partner for us that love distorts. When you're in love, you don't necessarily see those common sense things. And so it used to be the case that you would learn to love someone who you're compatible with, and that would make a lasting relationship, a lasting marriage. But now we took out the common sense and we're just hoping on love, and love is failing us. And it's supposed to fail us. It never could fail, uh, succeed. I always say your heart's job is to feel. It's not to think. Your brain's job is to think. And when you take the thinking out of the relationship, the thinking out of romance, the common sense part out of it, your heart didn't, didn't really fail. Your heart did what it's supposed to do. It felt. It felt something. It felt a connection. It felt love. And it, it, it didn't plan anything. And if you just run with, with love, you're going to run right off a cliff like so many millions and millions and millions of people have already done. And so the premise of my book is, how can we get some solution? And I said, well, what entity, what system do we have that really, really helps us to succeed that we're all familiar with? And the system is business. And so I premise on, on Twitter, all excuse me, on TikTok all the time, if we take business principles, which is my background and what my degree field is in, if we take business principles, and overlap business principles into romance and into how we get into romance, we could utilize the things that work in business and use them also in romance. And so the same level of respect that you give your boss, if your boss is, is, is coming to you and giving you an assignment and you don't like that assignment, you don't jump down your boss's throat or throw your hands up and say you're not going to do it, that same level of respect you're going to give to your partner at home. I realized this early on because I had the pleasure of dating some professional women in my military time. And I thought, how could you be so amazing at work but come home and be so lackluster? And they had never had the concept of bringing their professionalism home. And that's one of the core pillars of my book.
take your professionalism home. Ladies and men, a lot of women are, don't know how great their, their man is at, at work. They only hear at the Christmas party or at the company parties, but they never met that great guy. Why? Because he's never thought to himself to take the best version of him home. Romance, love has got us fooled into thinking that we don't have to be our best at home, that our partner, because they love us, has to tolerate our worst. And that's opposite. That's backwards. If you think about it, your partner is going to be the one who's going to nurse you back to help when you're sick, who's going to support you when you're, when you're fired or in between jobs. And so why wouldn't you give your partner your very best? You give your boss your very best, but you don't give your partner your very best. They say, well, it's money. Well, what kind of money are you going to have when you're fired? The average person today is going to have at least three jobs in their life post high school. So getting into a relationship, oh, your boss is the one who's going to be, come on now. We researched this stuff. I mean, I had to look it up, you know, when I'm doing my books because my book is about business and romance. The average person is going to have at least three jobs. We no three longer jobs. have what our parents, have. yeah, at least three. And that doesn't even include uh, how many professions they have. They may have more jobs. They may have three jobs per profession. I mean, the data is still being worked on, so we can't say the, for sure how many professions, but we can say for sure each person is going to have at least three jobs after high school, at least three. I mean, think about the companies have gone out of business been bought out by other companies is going to happen. So what's more, who are you going to spend more time with is the question. Your boss, for the few years that you're with him, until you go to your next job, her, him or her, the boss, or are you going to spend more time with your partner? If you marry someone and the average you know, marriage lasts at least seven years, you marry someone for life, chances are you're going to be with your partner longer than you're going to be with your employers. So why don't you take the best version of you home to the person you spend the most time with? That simple common mm. sense, mm. that simple kind of common sense is what I'm trying to bring to romance that we haven't had because love doesn't have anything to do with common sense. There is no common sense in love. Love is an emotion, a very strong emotion. It never said it was a common sense. Mm -hmm. All so, right. Let me ask a in closing question. or the introduction in closing, what, 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 what does it have to do with the topic? The topic is, what do you bring to the table? And I've been talking about it with you, sir, and others, and I've been making TikTok videos about it. The question is profound, and, it, and it, you must have an answer. And to the point that I was making about using business principles at work in romance, if you go to a job interview and they ask you what you're going to bring to our company, you are excited and prepared and you can't wait to elaborate on how great you are going to be for this company. In the exact same way, if you go on a date and someone asks you, man or woman, what you bring to the table, you have to have that same energy. You got to keep that same energy. You got to have that same preparation. You got to consider the same information that you are, are, are going to bring a lot to the table. And the people who have a problem with that question are mostly people who don't have a lot to bring to the table. And they're just deflecting to the person asking, Instead of doing what a normal person would do at an interview, talk great about themselves. It shouldn't be hard for people to talk great about themselves. It's only hard for you to talk great about yourself when you don't have a lot of great things to say about yourself. And my TikTok focus is my favorite hashtag, personal responsibility. It's your job to have something great to bring to the table. It's not the other person's job. It's your job. You have to be great on your own. You have to establish what you consider great on your own. It's all about your personal responsibility, not theirs. And whether they recognize your greatness or not is secondary to if you recognize it first. Please, please proceed with your question, sir. Okay. And wait, let me give the call number for those that's listening. The call number for tonight's show is 717-908-1834, access code 917-324-POUND. I repeat, 717 Nine zero eight one eight three four. Access code nine one seven three two four pound. Tonight's subject: Cast Rain presents. What do you bring to the table? Now, I've heard this notion throughout the um, social media and digital space of the question that, and I'm not gonna name names, but I'll just lay out for you and see what answer you give me. Is what's your views of, I guess, the husband? Um, if he's, I guess, financially stable, really good, and making money, he has his own business, that he should hire his wife and don't have his wife work her regular job or whatever she's doing. What's your views on that? 
So that's a great, great, great thing. I think I think any any partner and <laughs> since we're African American or Africans in the Americas, we should consider that African American females are the closest in earning to their male counterparts. And so the question for an African American male is just as good for African American female. If you have and African American females are leading as of 2020, one the most uh, leading entrepreneurs, they have opened the most businesses in, in, in the community. So African-American women are leading men, I think, two to one as far as, as entrepreneurship. So it's just as likely or even more likely for African-American female to be able to hire her man than it is for African-American male to hire his woman. That, that withstanding, I okay. say in my book that two things. One, you have to have a purpose for getting into any relationship. And every other relationship outside of romance, that's how people conduct themselves. When you go out there and you say, you know what, I love to skateboard. And then you're like, this other kid at the park skateboard is great. I'm going to try to be their friend. You have a purpose. You two have a goal that matches, and you seek out that alliance because you you have a matching goal. Well, in the same way, we need to do a romance, but love tells us, or romanticism has told us, it's not that big a deal. We don't really need it. We do. We absolutely do need a purpose. So people are struggling mightily. I mean, extreme struggles. If you look at any social media, if you look at all these romance movies, constantly people are struggling, struggling, struggling because they are skipping over the common sense. The first thing, the first thing you have to understand is your purpose. Why are you dating? Why are you out? Why are you calling this person? Why are you waiting for them to call you? Why does any of that matter? If your wise match, if both of you have similar purposes, we call that compatibility. Because at least you're compatible on the purpose. And the more things you're compatible underneath that purpose tree, underneath that purpose step, makes you more compatible. It's exactly like your job. You and your coworkers are compatible. You and your employer are compatible. If and for nothing else other than the purpose, you're all working towards similar goals. So if you and your spouse are compatible, you absolutely should be able to hire them to work in your business. I, I, I make this uh, analogy in my book. I say you should look for someone who's going in the same direction you are. So if you're a traveling nurse and he's a traveling doctor, you can figure that out over the Internet, that that could be potentially a, you know, a, a good partner to, to at least give a chance. Because you two are heading in the same direction. You both care about caring about people in the similar way. You both care. You both understand each other in a way that people outside of the medical field wouldn't understand each other. So you have these built-in building blocks that are going to make you compatible. But if he's a traveling nurse and you're a local teacher, you, you know inherently that you're going to have a conflict there that you're always going to be home with your students and he's always going to be away with his patients. And of course you could work through it, but the point is to understand where your compatibility are. It, it, it's, it's like the uh, Venn diagrams. You know, I, I apologize if it's not Venn diagram. I have too many things in my head, The two circles mm -hmm. with the space in the middle that overlap. That's what you got to do when you're dating. You got you to gotta look at where the two of you overlap. But before you overlap, the first thing you have to at least have the similar goals. And so if, if, if you have a business and your partner has skills in your business, you should absolutely hire them. Too many people, though, too many people, though, have a partner that have no skills. And I, and I say this, is more women do this than men. Women, because they believe in building up their man and, and seeing his hidden potential, a woman who one of these many women who uh, have uh, started entrepreneurs, started business in the last you know, few years, will hire a man who is absolutely unqualified, has no qualifications at all for her business, and not only bring him into the business, but put him in a high level of the business. She will take a mailroom level employee and put him on the board of her business because it's her man. And give him opportunities and power that he should never have. Men inherently don't make this mistake. Men have had trophy wives, 
before the term existed. And when have you ever seen a man who, who has a beautiful woman with no qualifications in his business, on his board, making decisions, giving advice? It's very uncommon. A trophy wife is exactly that. She's just something to look at. She don't write checks. She don't make decisions. She doesn't hire, fire. She's just there. But a woman will say, you know what? This man, he could be that good. He could really help out. If I just give him a chance and he's unqualified. And, of course, she will have to go through hell to get him out of there and, and, and go through hell dealing with a bad decision because she saw his potential instead of accepting the person that he really is. And we got to stop doing that. Ladies, if you're listening, don't do that. Gentlemen kind of know it, but if you haven't heard, don't do that. Don't make lifelong decisions on people's potential. Make decisions on who they are. And if they prove to be, because that's what you do in a business. If you're, if you're an entrepreneur, you, you, you can't afford to, to, to make crazy risks early on in your business before it takes off the ground. And hiring one of your, hiring your partner before they've proven themselves is a surefire way to throw your business away. So I, I, I advocate for hiring qualified partners. Absolutely. Matter of fact, I advocate for dating qualified people. Date people who are going in the same direction you are. You should know that before you get a business. You know, a lot of people don't start out being an entrepreneur. They start out in their field. And they get to know their field well and they get good at their field and they realize that they can do better on their own. And then they go out to be an entrepreneur. Well, if you are dating someone in your field already, if you are, and let me say, one of my other advices, one of my solutions to this big dating problem, the personal responsibility. You should be spending all your time making yourself a better person. You should be working on being a better person. You graduate high school, you graduate college, you start working on your graduate degree after you do your undergraduate degree. And I say, if you're out here struggling trying to find a partner, guess where you should be looking for your partner at? You should be looking for your partner in the places where you're making yourself a better person. So if you're working on your graduate degree, in college? So you got a job and you're working at a post-college, right? Secondary college. So okay. you finish your you finish your undergrad, you're going for your master's degree. And you're like, all right, I work at the bank and I'm gonna go ahead and get my 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 master's. The places that you're studying, the places that you are getting better as a person should be the places where you're looking for single people, potential partners. You can't have a serious partner, you can't take someone seriously that you met in a club, you're inebriated. He's inebriated. You don't really know each other. Okay, the sex might have been good, but how do you how do you know what what value that person has? You've never been to their job, or you go to their job to order, you know, the extra large fries and extra large drink. If that person isn't in the place where you're making yourself better, they're not going to be once you start dating them. They're not going to be once you marry them. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to start resenting them. You're going to say, like so many people have said on television, on the TV shows, on the, on the movies, I'm out here working hard to make myself better. Men say this all the time. I'm out here working on making myself better, and i got to drag you to success. You're not doing those same things. You're not trying to make yourself better. Well, guess what, brother? She wasn't doing that when you met her. You met her in the club. Boom. You got her pregnant Boom. after talking to her for a couple of weeks. You married her because she's having your baby. She never said that she was working on being better. You did. You were the one who said, yeah, I just got this new Mercedes. Yeah, I just finished my, my, my law degree, and I'm, going, I'm studying for my bar. You were the one with all the impressive stats, and you just accepted her with her smile and her nice butt. Well, guess what? That's all you have now, her smile and her nice butt. We can do better if we start with a concept of looking for a person with a purpose, dating with a purpose, and then partnering with people who are compatible, we won't have these kind of discussions where we're talking about, oh, I've been with this person for three years, and they ain't, they don't want to work out. They never work out. You don't have to be with them for three years to decide that they don't want to work out. You, have, you should have accepted that before you said, I do. They never work out. You are the one who like going to the gym. And you always talk about, yeah, I'm going to the gym and my lady's at home. Okay, but you can't resent her for that now, three, four years into the relationship. If, yeah. if going to the gym is important, then you need to make that known before you say, I do, before you give them the ring and give them opportunity to meet your standards. But you're not dating with a purpose 
is going to leave you with all this resentment and you're going to end up where half the country is already 50% divorced. Does that make sense, brother? Um, it makes perfect sense. And that's well said. And that's something that look at relationships is that, um, this is something that if we've been serious in the 21st century and people are dating for intention, then that's something that you have to look at. Now, my thing with a lot of men, and we'll get back to ladies in a second, is most of the young boys that's, let's say, 18 or your 20s, and you're just, what's the word, fucking around. Um, <laughs> you, get, you get doing that, and this is, I'm, I'm be honest with you, to a lot of black men that's going to not like this. I think in your 20s, you should take it as much serious, and if you have a purpose, be on it as, as much as you can. And the reason why I say it is because one of the few things we, we lack in our community is, let's be honest, we don't know where we're heading and where we're going. Give me, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like um, having a system, a console, and there's no game to put in to play this console. <laughs> I um, see you, I see you. My, my, see you. My, thing, my thing with a lot of use and I'm not saying that most dudes should be reckless and, be, and they should be promiscuous. No, I want you to hear me out. You got to be intentional what you're doing out here. Just now, just to throw this little um, wrench into the conversation, we're hearing now the alleged of Drake with this so-called woman that he had fun with, and she almost burned her whole uterus out trying to steal the condom to come out the condom. But wow. It goes to you that as a man, and mind you, Drake is an '80s baby, bro, like us. And yeah, find yeah, that you at yeah. this point, a little younger than us, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause he's now he's in his mid thirties now. That yeah. what intention you set for you as a man? Now that you're at the you're a middle age now, black man or a mixed man, where you want to call him, right? You're still out here messing around because you have no purpose. You get so me? I need to push back on that a little bit. You want to push back? Push back. We, we, push are, back. We, are allowed, we are allowed to think differently. We, we, we respect each other's views. My right. view is that you should, you should declare when you become serious. And everyone should assume you're not serious until you make a public declaration. Think about a marriage. It was a time where it was understood. Mm -hmm. It was understood that you would have a ceremony. Now, a lot of, yeah. a lot of people these days are not having a ceremony. A lot of people these days are just out here not doing nothing. They just they just go to the courthouse and they, they walk away. And the reason I feel like they walk away is because I mean there are a few reasons, but one of the reasons is they're not they didn't plan this out. They're just doing it to do it. And a lot of women are leading out and saying, Look, I've been with you this long and you need to marry me. And a lot of men are saying, I'm gonna marry her because I don't want no one else with her. These both both of these things are absurd, ridiculous reasons that lead us to fifty percent divorce rate. You don't marry someone just because you don't want anybody else to have them, and you damn sure don't marry anyone because you've just been with them too long in your mind. You have some kind of clock that you, and I under, we respect the women who say this, and it's a true fact that they have a pressure from society to be married that men don't have. And that's something that I can't fix that we need to be aware of. Because mm -hmm. how are we going to yeah. tell women to get married and not men? That makes no sense. Because yeah, obviously that's, in the that's, heterosexual that's context, the men are marrying the women. So we teach women to get married. We don't teach men to get married. And the women who feel pressured by this need to recognize this as a way to alleviate that pressure. You can't marry yourself. So the society is not teaching men to marry, but only teaching women to marry. It's a fucked up society that doesn't, they, they, they're irrational. We don't need to listen to society. Women, we don't need to listen to society that's telling you you have to get married. Because who the heck are you going to marry? You should mm. listen to common sense. The common sense that I'm talking about, which says that you only marry for reasons of meeting your goals, and, the, and not just your goals, but common goals. You, you get into any relationship with a person who's going to help you reach your goals. If you didn't marry a man who's going to help you reach your goals, you shouldn't marry. And more importantly, if you didn't marry a man who's going to help you reach your goals, you're going to get divorced. It's only a matter of time, statistically. Yeah. And so you said, you know, young men should, and the pushback, the small pushback I had is that young men should have a purpose. Well, I feel like people will discover their purpose when they do. I don't have, I don't believe in predestiny. I believe mm -hmm. that people find their purpose. People choose their own purpose. And so when you figure out what you, the purpose that you're going to choose, then you commit to it. 
Because if you just, if somebody just gives you a purpose or tells you a purpose or shoves a purpose down your throat, you're not going to be fully committed. And this marriage thing is supposed to be for life. It's not supposed to be for a year or two or so or a decade. It's supposed to be for, as long as we're living nowadays, it's supposed to be for 60 plus years. Nobody can tell you what to do for 60 years. There's no, there's no ability within humans to force you into that. Another reason why we're getting divorced. So if it's not something you personally are committed to, it's not something that you find in your heart and soul and being, it's not going to last. And so getting married to a guy who you've been with for two or three years because y'all have a kid, you're going to be divorced. And I'm saying to young people out there, play the field until you're ready, until you're ready to commit, until you can commit to what you're saying, because you're going to be back to my original point. We used to be, we go up on a stage and we have a ceremony and we talk and we declare and we vow, quote unquote, vow to, to, to everyone that sees us that, that we are going to stick to this relationship. Now, those vows don't amount to much now as, as high as the divorce rate is, but I specifically told my wife, even though she didn't ask me for it, that we have to have a wedding ceremony. I didn't, I wasn't concerned with how she personally felt about it, but I wanted her to know that I was going to vow in front of her family and friends and in front of my family and friends, my commitment to her. It's important that the public know how committed I am to my wife. Not just a ring, not just a court order, but that everyone knows that I'm taking this seriously. And I think more people need to make that. Unfortunately, you should be a parent who set up and pay for it, and that doesn't happen anymore. Too many single families out there, excuse me, too many people raised in single parent homes, and you don't have both parents that can contribute financially to that. But the point is, you want to make those vows, and you want to take it seriously, and you want to make it public, and that's how you take it seriously, by making it public. I publicly vow to clean that up. Publicly vow to stay to be with my spouse under these circumstances. And until you could really say that, until you could picture yourself doing that, you shouldn't be getting married. I say don't get married until you're 30, at least. Don't even think about it until you're at least 30. When you're 30, that's when you start to plan to get married. Because before you're 30, you don't even know who you are or who you're going to be. You're not the same person at 18 that you are at 28, and you're damn sure not the same person at 38. So if you got married at 25, you're going to be a completely different person at 55. Does your vows matter? Do they mean anything? Should I have taken them seriously at 25? No. That's on me. I'm wrong for believing that you were going to be that person at 55 that you said you were going to be at, at 25. It's not even worth, you know, you ever heard this phrase? A promise is a comfort to a fool. You've got to yeah. be a fool to think that a 25-year-old really is going to be the same person that committed to you at 25 that they are at 55. Mm -hmm. And everyone is a fool for believing that. And some people aren't even mature at 30 or 35. Drake seems to be struggling. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really approve of how of the woman he chose to have a baby with. If you think about it, he's, he's exactly what I'm talking about. Did Drake plan to have a child? He was ashamed no. of hiding it for the longest, did he? So, so yeah. we can't and, trust and, and, him to make and that be decision. Honest you, to be honest with you, the reason why he kind of um, told the public now is because, let's be honest, um, one rapper kind of put it in a verse. Yeah. And, and, uh, and here's the, my thing. Push the T, push the T, him. Right? And and push the T, right, in the battle. Right? Yes, yes. And one thing with Pusha T, when Pusha T did that, it's actually a blessing because overall when he, reflect back he really wants to be involved in this children his child's life and he didn't want to be high too much and he'd been high now for the last what when, when this thing came out was it back in 2019 oh no nah, yeah. i'm pretty sure I'm because pretty sure it, the, bay, the, bay, the bay i might have been all over the the bay was born in 2017 so, okay so right. i was, I was thinking it, of closer it, to 18 that he got exposed yeah so it looked like Maybe. no, no it, was I don't it was 2019. I know, trust me. I would defer to that, your that memory. Year. I do not know. Yeah. So, but the but the point is, I want people to understand is eventually he was going to part reveal it anyway because, like any man, he wants not not only be concerned about the public's views about him, but he wants to have a loving, involving relationship with his child. Now, mind you, this child was conceived not planned by him, but it happens. So when I mentioned the thing about the hot sauce and this thing that he's going to go through now, is because he doesn't want to go through it again. And it comes to my understanding, this is me now, people, 
that it's going to come to a point that when is a man going to be fucking serious? Because with all that money and clout, if we want to look at it as that, you have a lot to lose with this behavior, especially as you get up in your 30s. And I think I don't want people to reflect what other men are doing now, but we should have a really examination that when the bar has to stop for us as men. Because like you said, Paco, society doesn't really give push about men should think of marriage the same way as women. And I think the reason why, because they think women have a certain timetable, so men think it's all good. I have all the time in the world. But here's the problem. As a man, your life in this time frame is very uncertain as a man, especially if you're a black man. Mm-hmm. And it can happen to you any time now. Absolutely. You have kids. And I, and, and, and I, and I and I would say this: I have a solution. So okay. there's there's I I I I've read a significant amount of romance books. Uh, the majority of best-selling authors in the romance um, genre are people who have PhDs in um, r- um, relationship counseling. And I read their books because I don't have a PhD in relationship counseling, but I want to be taken seriously in the area when I release my book. So I want to do my research. And, and a lot of those books don't have practical solutions. A lot of those books are mostly just go to counseling, work it out, uh, kind of get over it, kind of just forgive your partner, forgive a kid, forget. So I am happy to say that I don't have that kind of, you know, elementary That's not like I'll be your way for it. That's not like I'll be your way for it. Oh, there's, there, there's, there's so many of them, and they, they have similar. A lot of people are identifying problems with not solutions. So I, I'm happy to say I want to be the guy who's identifying solutions. And one solution I have for for men who are not ready to settle down and be married to uh, a woman in their 20s and 30s is get a vasectomy. I personally couldn't wait to get a vasectomy. I, I, I'm the fifth <laughs> child, and I know this is, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to say all the controversial things. That's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm different. Going good. So, uh, I'm so I, I, I couldn't wait to get a, a vasectomy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the fifth child, and I realized that my, you know, coming from another country and how hard it is to afford children in the United States and what my parents went through, I didn't want my, I didn't want to put my children through that. And so I said, I'm going to minimize my children I have. But, you know, young, healthy, healthy sex drive is, is difficult. So I would take precaution. And I have to, personal responsibility again, I have to take precautions I can take. I can't necessarily be sure that I'm going to stop a girl from getting the sperm out of a condom but I could be sure that I put less sperm in that condom. I could be sure that I don't, that I always use a condom. And so for men who are concerned about the second, they used to be more dangerous. And men have this, 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 this stereotype or this thought that if you have a vasectomy, they cut your, your, your balls off is literally what men say. It's not true. No, it's not. That's you not can true. have children after you have a vasectomy yeah. because you take this, you still produce sperm every single day and you still have sperm that come out of your, your, well, what, your, your penis. What, what, you what just thing? take that sperm cell and inject it into your wife. Let's mm-hmm. say you get a vasectomy at 30 and you get married at 40. You still get the sperm. You still have the baby. It's still your child. It's just an extra step. But to me, mm-hmm. isn't it worth it to have an extra step to not have baby mamas running around? What, what price is a baby mama? What price is it worth to have the peace of mind not to have a baby mama? I would pay anything to not have... I, I, well, I'm thankful I don't have to. I would, I would pay anything and not have the nightmares that some of these men are talking about having with these women that they don't, they're never going to be with. So mm-hmm. there's a practical solution. Get a vasectomy, take your sperm cells when you're ready, inject it into your wife, and have the baby then. It costs a little bit more, but it's nothing compared to 18 to 20 years of, of child support. It's nothing. Mm-hmm. It's nothing compared to the, to the peace of mind mm-hmm. of having a child that you mm-hmm. actually want and that you actually plan for Versus all these children that you didn't plan for, that you have to get a second job to pay child support, and blah, 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 blah. I, I don't have any of those headaches. I don't have any of those nightmares. I've never had any of them because I took a step, and I want to encourage other men to consider. You know, I can't tell people what to do, but the stigma behind uh, uh, the sex is, is childish. Yeah. It's childish. And I if mean, you want a serious solution, that's a fair solution. Well, my thing with the verse sex to me is um, I really do too much research, but what I've understand about it now and I mean it is problematic depending on what a man wants 
I'm not really advocating what men do with their seed. The only thing I tell people, if you're sexually act like that, you know what I'm saying, then you're going to have to rubber up, you know. And if you're like a celebrity or well-known um, person that is established like that and have wealth like that and you're known and you're visible, then obviously, you know, you might have to pay for escorts or something. And uh, th these are my, my suggestions. Um, my problem with the vasectomy, because now I'm finding even mothers trying to vasectomy their sons. I heard one stupid stream. It was like an upload. A mother's going to get get her son a vasectomy at 13, 14 years old. And I'm looking at that woman as, you crazy? You don't do that early? Because one thing with the research that people didn't want to talk about, if you had it and you had it for over a decade, it kind of cuts your chance of, you know, the healthy quality of the sperm the longer you have that vasectomy. So if you do that on a child... So that your, used to be a thing, but it actually doesn't affect your sperm at all. You, once you, as a human, stay healthy, your sperm will be healthy. The vasectomy only seals the tubes that release the sperm out of the penis. The sperm itself is produced in the glands that it's already producing inside of your sac. So that, that there's nothing about the health of the sperm. Now, women have a different thing because women don't produce new cells every day. They don't produce new eggs every day, but men produce new sperm every single day. And so as long as you are a healthy man, you have a healthy diet, you will have healthy sperm. Plus, if you're going to do the in vitro, you're going to be able to take a sperm cell and put, and take that and put it into an egg. So this is not mother nature. This is this is science. You'll yeah, be able no. to get the best sperm cell that you um, produce um, and put um, it with the best egg that she produces and give yourself the best chance to have the healthiest possible yeah, child um, if you choose that path. It's it's more it's more safe than people think, but of course every person has to do their research and consider it. Mm -hmm. I just say yeah. there's there's nothing worse than having children running around that you don't take care of and baby mamas that you can't control. So and, that's where and, we're at. Yeah, and I'm saying we can get better. And, and and my thing to most of those that complain about that, and just it's just me. And if they're getting like that, then by all means they should take every precaution necessary. You know, like I said, I don't really advocate what people do, especially men do with their seed. You know, I know some people that get it after they had their kids, and that's fine. Um, but my thing because I already know what what the complications, long term complications. I don't really push certain things, regardless of what they say. This, but like I said. Most people should be more responsible. And if a person's not responsible, like I said, this country is wonderful for punishing men. Once you're sitting there, you're having kids by un women that you don't want to um, be with long term and don't want to fend for it, which that was introduced back in the 30s. So for all dudes that do complain, you hear it constantly, Paco. I look at that, you know, most dudes, they got to chalk it up. You get me? I don't have kids out here like that if I want to or not. But I know that the responsibility, besides the finance, but everything, because a child needs more than finance. It needs someone involved to care, nurture, and share. Absolutely. Away. And, and you see what a lot of dudes, let's say the master, that's why you don't see them push that type of thing. They're more, they're more pushing on the woman for some reason. And this is my thing when it comes to adults. And a lot of adults got to hear me understand so well. Sex is a procreation act. It's not going to escape us in this generation and won't escape us when we're gone. Once you play with sex, you always have the chance of risk. That's it. Absolutely. And if we can't get that understanding right now, I don't care if the women take the pill or you use the con, you're you always taking a risk. You're flipping the coin that heads, she might not get pregnant, tails, she might get pregnant. So we should have an understanding and clear be clear about that. So, like I said, if you do that's getting like that, I mean, like I said, you have to be disciplined. See, my thing with a lot of people that I'm around with, I always look at how disciplined you are of not your action, but what you do with your seat. And if you're not in that direction, there's no way how you could better yourself and build whatever type of wealth or accomplishment you're going to have because you keep spilling your seat over the place. You know what I'm saying? And another, that's important I'm, another, another important book. Another important book to consider. Let me get that way. Well, I'm just making this in, in relation to what you're saying about about okay. what you do. Seven seven things that successful people do. That's the name of the book. Seven acts that successful people do. So to help to to add to your point about is what do you do? What do you do? 
successful people have a level of professionalism and consistency, and it's exactly what you're talking about. So continue. I was just plugging okay. that book. Oh, okay, okay. People cool, who cool. want to be better. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. And that's a good pl plug. If y'all guys, y'all can go back to replay and find the information in that book. And like I said, um, you, you drain yourself every time. Um, trust me, I know firsthand sometimes about it. And as you get older, it doesn't get any better. It does get a little problematic because obviously, you know, most students don't understand you can't be busting like you used to when you're 20s, you know. <laughs> you can, you make make, make the use true. of that energy, you know. So very I tell true, most true. men constantly, you know, like the Drake situation, and I will say this personally to a lot of men, and a lot of men are concerned about this. I say, listen, you don't got Drake's money. See, a man like that, yep. he has to be concerned about what he does with his seat. Now, he's gonna, he's, this is going to come and go, and he's going to pay the little damage that that chick or that doc got because she thinks she was going to get a quick bag. But it lets you know, as a man, if you're putting yourself in that higher direction, in that notoriety, that this is the consequence once you're loose with yourself out here in the street, especially in America. Outside America, you don't have this concern. If you're a man and you, you're concerned about it, you go out to travel outside the country. But as long as you remain in the United States, the rules and laws are state that protects women. And you should understand and know that well. It does protect you as men, but mostly it's more catered to the women. So you should know the, the laws of the land and move accordingly. And I'm sorry, because I hear a lot of dudes keep making these same excuses and say, you're in this country. It's going to be more favorable to women because you are the prize. As much time women don't hear that, and I say, why well, I say this bluntly? Because think about it. Where are you going to get your resource from? Are you going to get it from women or a man? I'll wait. So keep that in mind. But let's move on to the conversation. Oh, the call number for tonight's show is 717-908-1834. Access code 917-324-POUND. Tonight's stream, Chaos Rain presents. What do you bring to the table? Now, the TikTok video. If you want to give a quick background what you're talking about to those that not follow sure. TikTok, what was the thing if you – I wish I could play it. Um, let me see. Yeah. Um, go, 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 go explain it because if, I, if, if, I, if, you, if you know the short, maybe I could possibly play it and let people hear it. I got you. So a young, so, you know, strolling through TikTok, and I'm on the relationship side. So a young lady, uh, she seemed to have, she was African. She was definitely African because she was speaking, I don't know if it was Swahili or one of her native languages. But she said, the video started out with her saying, uh, not her, a, a guy coming on. It was, a, you know, one of these um, split duet things. And I said, ladies, when, when you hear a man say, what do you bring to the table? What do you hear? And so the African girl went on to say, uh, when I hear a man say, what do you bring to the table? I hear that he doesn't have shit and, and he shouldn't be asking me that. If I have to verbalize what I bring to the table, then he's not worth my time because I will be able to figure out what he brings to the table after a few dates and so on and so on. And, and he doesn't have the critical thinking to be the kind of man that I need if he has to ask me what I bring to the table. And I was offended by that video and every, everything she said was absolute and utter nonsense. One, she said that she shouldn't have to verbalize. And everyone listening to me, let me be clear. The, the most important thing in any relationship is communication. Any relationship, you cannot have a successful relationship without communication. It is your personal responsibility to verbalize your position. In every relationship, whether you're the boss or whether you're an employee, whether you're the CEO or whether you're a new intern, Every single person has a responsibility to communicate and verbalize their position. It's not someone else's position of responsibility to speak on your behalf. So that was the first bit of nonsense. You could tell that this, this young lady doesn't understand the basic rules of relationships. Secondly, she said you don't have the critical thinking to deal with her. And I said in my video, you must not understand what critical thinking is because critical thinking, one of my favorite phrases, one of my favorite things in the world, says that you take you're trying to find perspective. You're trying to look at all aspects of a situation. And you need two or more independent sources of data to have critical thinking. You cannot have critical thinking for both parties. You can't have critical thinking for your other, for your other partner. You can't give them critical thinking. You can contribute your knowledge, take their knowledge, and then with those two, you can get critical thinking from the, both perspectives. But you can't have critical thinking with just your perspective. That is the opposite of critical thinking, just your perspective. 
So you need the other person to stay and speak and follow their actions based on what they think in order to have critical thinking. So that's another major fail. Then she said, I'm going to get to know you after the first couple of days. Well, why would you, what makes you think you're going to get a couple of dates? How do you assume you're going to get a couple of dates? What if you do badly on the first date? You won't get a couple of dates. And this question of what you bring to the table is absolutely a first date question. If you follow my recommendations, if you follow my views, if you follow my suggestion that you need to have someone who is heading in your direction, who has similar goals. So if the first question on the date is, give me your one-year goal, five-year goal, then those, those questions will lead you to asking, well, what do you bring to the table? Because we've established that we have similar goals. Now we need to know, what do we have the tools that help us to achieve those goals? And if you, and if you don't have those tools, I don't need to go on a second and third or fourth date with you. Me being a nice guy, I won't go on another date with you. I will just be trying to get you to be a casual, be a bust down, be, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you have some good sex because clearly you don't have the other things that I need. You're not going to be my girlfriend. And I'm sure most men conduct it that way. If you don't have what I need, well, maybe your sex is good. Maybe it's not, but that's all it's going to go. And women do the same thing. They don't admit to it as much, but that's how it has to be. If you're not compatible in the overall picture, you'd be lucky to be compatible sexually, and it's just going to be a very short-term thing, a fling, uh, here and there. Everyone cannot be the one. Everyone is not marriage material. And we need to stop. Romanticism got us fooled thinking that you can marry everyone. You can technically marry them all, but you're also going to fail if you don't have these basic common sense parameters set up where I'm actually trying to get a partner who is compatible, who has goals we can see into the future. Anything outside of that is nonsense. And so that video led me to talk about this topic with you, and I appreciate you inviting me on. You guys can go on to TikTok and see the video at Dr. Black. That's D-R-B-L-A-Q-U-E. And see the video. You know, what What did you hear him say is the title. And we, we I break it down on her video and and. And just the ignorance of, of her statements and her views and, mm -hmm. and how you can tell that she's not uh, good at dating or prepared to be good at dating. And you don't have to be good at something the very first day. But we all should be trying to get better, as I, as I keep saying. And if you're trying to get better, stereotyping. I hate stereotyping. She just stereotyped men for that whole video. And a mm -hmm. lot of women out here complaining about the manosphere. A lot of women out here talking about how the manosphere is saying something they, those women aren't. Well, none of us should be stereotyping. If a manosphere can't stereotype, you can't turn around and stereotype men. I'm a oh. feminist. So I don't stereotype. Ooh. So either we're going to be respectful to each other or we're not. Right. I'm not supporting the stereotype of men. I'm not supporting the stereotype of women. I'm supporting mm -hmm. what can we do to be good teammates. And anyone who's not interested in that, we don't got nothing to talk about. People who actually try to have successful relationships, that's where we can have a conversation. And again, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity because you having a serious mm -hmm. conversation with me. You know, as you're talking, we have one guy, oh, we have one person that raised their hand. Let's take this call, shall we? All right, let's see. First caller, open up. All right, caller, open your line. Who's this? Um, This is Miss Lady. All right, good evening, Miss Lady. Miss Lady. All right, go ahead. Okay, so mm -hmm. I just, there's one extremely important characteristic that you haven't, uh, maybe I, I haven't listened to the whole thing. Maybe you talked about it in the beginning. Intelligence is very important, but character is equally as important as intelligence. And what I'm hearing is that it's a lot of transactional, um, a lot of the relationships, you advocate are really transactional, and um, I think it should beyond, be, be a lot beyond transactional um, with, with a potential spouse. And I'm going to say women bring a, a lot of intangible things, a good woman, to a relationship that you really can't even pay for or put a price on. So it's more than what do you bring to the table in terms of, I, I'm not sure what you mean by that. To be honest, you might want to be a little bit more clear because <laughs> I had a... That would be a good place to stop, right? 
ugly, undereducated. Man, I was not interested. I'm a, just a, a, a friendly person, and I'll say hello to people. And just because, you know, I, I like saying hello to people and acknowledging their existence, and he had the nerve to t- turn around and be so ugly. I don't even know who he is. And talk about, well, what do you bring to the table? I'm looking at this ugly, unattractive, much older man with a big stomach and these braces on his teeth, and I, I just was in shock. I mean, it's so what I'm like, I, I, and I was, I was, I could have been very unkind to him. But I decided not to do it because obviously was very angry and hurt about some relationship. Uh, uh, Secondly, I mean, I want to say is that women have more to lose by getting married to the wrong person and having children with the wrong person. Or even if they're not married, getting with the wrong person, it can derail their whole future by getting pregnant, having a set of twins, and and they're at high risk of of the man abandoning their themselves, their children, and the not marriage? providing any support whatsoever, married or unmarried. They're, I mean, the divorce rate is very high anyway with black How people. How does a man abandon my and he's in the marriage? Can you explain that? Well, they do. They leave. <laughs> they leave. So this uh, is how you leave. And he, he does not file for divorce. So you tell me he gets gip and leave and he, she's still they, married they, to the man? Will get up and leave. They will get up and leave. And then they'll maybe file for divorce later. That happens too. So, so what I'm saying is that women now, you have know, a lot lady, of... Men, men are not find divorce like that. If a man is up at it and getting away and like walking out of this so-called marriage, he was never married to the start. And trust me, there are most Americans oh, no. that, that, that are not married like that. Now, I, I, know, I, I know some people that are not married, and a man could get up and leave. Uh, that's common. I hear about, what you're I know talking about. about. A man that, that's married, married and he said he just said the hell with it, and then years you? and when years and years, not, you're wrong. that, that, you're that wrong don't really make sense. You're wrong. You don't, you're wrong. Come on, come on, then you get up and leave. Now, married or unmarried, they can get up and leave. If we, we Papa was we, wrong. We, we, we talking about the ones that's crazy. married, um, Miss Lee. The one that's married, he just said the hell with this. Let me get married. Married so, or uh, unmarried, he's, he's, he's still married. So, uh, 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 obviously, if he gets and he's not and in done, he, he, well, I'm he, done. He's normally you're silly. Five. You're too silly. I'm just laying out. You're being I'm just laying out. And you're wrong. Relax. Relax. Someone who's never been Relax. married, you should have a lot of... Miss Lady, don't leave, but I haven't, I haven't addressed your question. And he's going to tell okay. me, interrupt you. No, 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 no. Okay. it's okay, Miss Lady. I, I want to answer your question, so please don't leave. <laughs> Miss Lady, I, I do want to ask your question. And he, 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 he has a different call, view. He's interrupt, he's adversarial, and he doesn't no, no, make no, no, any... No, 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 it's okay. No, no, no. It's a, it, it, we as humans don't know everything. He's unaware, but I would like to say to you, I'm aware of exactly what you're saying. And in the court system, there is an actual article that allows you to be divorced based on abandonment. Men have been am- abandoning women for centuries. So you are right. I'm familiar with it. It's okay if chaos isn't familiar with it. He's, he did, he's saying that he's not familiar with it. That's okay. You and I, Miss Lady, are familiar with abandonment. It's not high. It's not billions and millions and millions of people. But it does happen. Miss Lady's correct. It has happened. It does happen that some men in marriages just up and leave and don't file for divorce. And eventually the woman kind of gets the, it's relative to being annulled because the man is nowhere to be found. He, he didn't, he changed his number. He changed his name, went to another country, whatever it is. And she's left with the children. Miss Lady, you are correct. Women have higher risk. It is absolutely true. It's factual. Or if we want to say women keep more children more often, so the person who's left with the child to take care of the child, children alone, is at a risk, which is usually the ladies. Yes, Miss Lady, you're correct. I would like to address what you said at the beginning, Miss Lady. Your question was, what do we mean by bring to the table? That is fundamental to this conversation. We, we almost start arguing if, if we don't even state our terms. So what we mean by what you bring to the table is, excuse me, what I mean, 
And I think this is implicit in the, in the statement. What I mean is, what benefits do you have? Most of us are familiar with a, a pros and cons list. When we want to make a decision, we'll have a piece of paper, we'll make a, a line down the middle and a T at the top, and we'll have pros and cons, and we'll try to write down the pros and cons, and we try to see which one, which side has more. If we want to go to the University of Alabama, we're going to say, all right, I have to move 15,000 miles from, excuse me, 15,000, 1,500 miles from my home, 3,000 miles from my home. I got to pay this much tuition, but I, I got a scholarship. We have a pros and cons. Okay. When we say, what do you bring to the table? Or what I say, when a person says, what do you bring to the table? They would like you to list the pros. What are benefits that you will bring, general benefits that you can bring to the relationship without knowing a lot about the other person, knowing yourself, just basic general benefits. You have a college degree. You've got 10 years experience on your job. You have all your student loans paid off. These are basic things. It's a simple resume type answer. And so every man, every person should be able to list their pros. I keep saying you should be able to brag about yourself. It's just like if you go to an uh, interview, you should be able to brag about yourself. Saying. I I hear yes, what you're please. saying. Uh, what is your credit score? Okay, that's important too. That's another important. important. Absolutely, yes. As being African American, people have had setbacks, and you're going to expect that. So, that, for me, that that. Uh, if you can explain those setbacks and they make sense and, and show, you know, what you've done to improve your your situation, that shows, see, see there's other qualities. Are you disciplined? Are you determined? Okay, and so, Miss Lady, you, if, I wanted to say something about that. You had said that earlier. Okay. You said women bring intangibles. And I agree with you, but people should bring intangibles. It's not about being a woman, it's about being a human being. Each human is, has inherent value, and their intangibles are the foundation for that inherent value. And, and each person's intangibles could be different. So men and women bring intangibles. Because like yeah, I said, there are a lot of African-American women right now who started businesses, and they bring financial benefits that they wouldn't have brought 50 years ago. So okay, we have many people that example. each of us bring intangible. Example of the intangibles I'm talking about. And yeah, here you women go. Bring? No, mm -hmm. hold on. Let's talk about the intangibles. See, see, they did research years ago, uh, and it'll be a whole lot more now. What does the average mother and wife, in terms of their contribution to the marriage, and they said if the if a man had to pay like other people to do all the work the women do in the house with the children, they would have to pay something like half, uh, half a million dollars a year. Because if they had to go out and pay for all of the stuff the women do, and that's what I'm saying, that men don't, they don't want to recognize that, or maybe they don't understand it, and, and they're not trying to understand it. For instance, there's a lot of mental and emotional energy, that, and there's a lot of spiritual uh, uh, kind of energy that a woman brings to the family. So the family will succeed. And that you don't put a price, you, you don't put a dollar amount. It's not the credit score. It's not you starting a business, but if you have ability, do you have patience? Do you have vision for the future? Can you communicate well? Do you have people's back? Do you, uh, 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 you know, like this friend of mine years ago, she was a two-year nurse, right? She didn't have a bachelor's at the time. She met, she was in her early 20s, and she knew she wanted to marry a successful man. She did not want to work herself into the grave. She met, he was a resident at the time, a physician working in a hospital who was going to be an anesthesiologist. They started dating. She told him within four months, listen, I want to be married. She checked him out. He was nice. Mama was nice. Grew up with a single mother, by the way. Very smart. Went to Stanford. Stanford Medical School. She said, I want to be married to you, and if you're not interested at all, see that as a possibility, 
then we need to go our separate ways. And she said it in a nice way because I'm not going to waste my youth, you know, uh, hoping that I'll get married. No, I have a plan for my life too, and it's to be married to a responsible, educated man who's going to bring home resources so my children have a great chance of being successful and I won't be running to the ground haggard. Do you know they were married within a year and a half? Do you know because of her uh, vision and understanding, he was going to interview with this anesthesia group and he was going to be the first black person to be hired. There were two other ones that had more experience than him. He was new. She had the understanding. We're going to role play this interview. I'm going to pick out your suit and tie. So, and we're going to, you're going to be comfortable. We're going to cover all the bases when you go in there. And, you know, and, and do you know what? He got the job over the two people that had a lot more experience. Do you know where he is now? He's the chief of anesthesiology. She. Miss Lady, can I say something? Yeah, well, hold on. This, I'll be finished in a minute. All of those years they were married, she brought a whole lot to the table. In fact, he was making so much money, she stopped working because it didn't make sense to give the government all that tax money. She spent so much time with their two children. They were, she spent energy and time. They learned foreign languages, John. They were going to the museum. They learned about computers before, I mean, I mean, they, they were doing everything, golf, swimming, um, vacationing well, being taken to nice place. They know how to pick up the right fork and how to speak to people and speak with people of all socioeconomic levels, all races of people. She was having a dinner party with other physicians and other professionals, attorneys at the home. She picked out the first house, so we need to sell this and buy this other one in this area because she could foresee the equity was going to skyrocket. Lady, he was going to do it, but he 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 Ms. understood lady. her vision. Hello. Um, yeah, the there? house they bought for six hundred uh, dollars. If, if, if you could now two point five million. Lady. Hello. Can you shorten it a little bit? Could we? The lines now just filled up. Somebody wants to raise I, their I, hand I, to come in. So I'm saying, I'm saying, no, they know, they know. Does they know? Does so this is what I'm saying, the intangible, the intangibles, and they are wealthy because he didn't have to worry about his wife, about his children. She stayed in shape. She has a beautiful home. She's a, she went back to school and got her bachelor's degree, and now she's teaching nursing part-time. But he didn't have to worry. So listen, that's what I'm talking about, all of these intangibles. And so... Uh, it's more than just, well, what's your credit score and uh, did you start your own business? You know, the I, that, you, uh, you know I, I, I agree that with that you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. I, I, Ms. Lay, I agree with a lot of things you said. The problem with the, the main problem with what you said is you're su you suggested, I don't know if you meant to suggest, you suggested that somehow has something to do with being a woman. That has nothing to do with being a woman. There are mil millions, if not billions of men who have the exact same story for their lady. And some men have the same story for both the man and the woman in your story. So he has both the vision and the money. And so men are saying that we don't want to have to do everything. And so women who want to stay home and, and be stay at home mothers, Hey, good luck with that. I, I spoke about that on my TikTok. I don't advocate for that. I feel like, again, if we're going to, to be compatible, People got to put in work. There's no excuse. And this is my major thing for any woman who wants to stay home and take care of children, be a stay at home mom. I'm still waiting for an answer to this. Whichever woman wants to call in and answer this, please share this with me. After the children are growing up, what you're going to do? Let's assume that you never got your degree. Let's assume that you, you met your husband young and he married you young and you had children young, you know, the healthiest way to do things. What are you going to do when you're 40 and those kids are in college? Or, or after college and moved on to their life. What are you going to do? Because you still now don't have a college degree and you're not prepared for the workforce. You've been out of the workforce your whole life. What are you going to do? I don't advocate to be stay-at-home mother. I don't advocate to, to be with the kids. I mean, what 
The idea that children need 24-hour care is absurd to me. We're not raising people on the no, daggone I'm farm. If we do that, that, I'm not saying you said that. I'm saying, I'm saying in 2022, children go to school and have activities. You're going to have eight hours a day as a stay-at-home mom. What are you going to but bring to the table on the agenda? What, what, what's happening? It depends on everybody's situation. Like for them, it may no I sense. Don't, no, I don't think it depends on everybody's situation. We're all in the same unit. We're in the same society. She was a professor. I know I'm talking about today. I feel you. I feel you. But I'm talking about today. I'm talking about if a person is dating today and they're getting married today, what are you going to do at home with the kids? Because you're going to be home for maybe five years. Then the child's going to school eight hours a day and maybe another hour or two in after school activities. And what you going to do? What are you doing? You can't compare yourself with your husband who's working to pay the bills if you're at home and you're not doing anything. What are you doing? Well, you ha- and, and you should be doing something for yourself. What are you? Okay, you I'm, know, I'm asking. What are you doing? You're not cleaning all day. I saw how it worked for them. Like, one of the daughters is a physician now. She was, like, ready for anything because she had all that attention from her mother, and she was exposed and learned so much when she was five years, you know, three years old on up. So it worked. You give her mom too much credit. She learned all that at school. Her mom didn't teach her none of those languages. No. You, you were not mm-hmm. there. I was. And I saw what mm-hmm. was going on. Are I you suggesting that her mother taught her those languages, or did she learn them in school, Miss Lady? I'm not saying I know. I'm asking. No, what I'm saying is the mother was able not to be rushing from work to try and get her to a class and trying to give her a little uh, 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 throw, throw away uh, uh, dinner in the car. Her mother was able, first of all, to shop and get the best food. She took all kind of cooking classes. She was cooking the best food, right, very healthy. She was able to do that, feed her family nutritious meals, her husband nutritious meals. He's in shape. He don't have hypertension. He, she was able to research and find all these activities and participate in those activities. She was able to volunteer at the schools, the good schools, her children Ms. were Lane, going have you to. ever heard a phrase, exception to the rule? Well, yeah, but I'm just saying for them, it worked. Now, if your husband's not a physician, if the average person's not going to marry, uh, well to do and he was invested he was smart i mean he had i mean he didn't have to worry about a whole lot so he is at work and learn investing that money and i'm telling you super well they happy they hold hands happy okay they make it yeah but i'm now, asking if you've ever heard person, exception to the rule the average person no and so she was already yeah a there we go we got to talk about the money. average people we can't talk about one okay. extreme side or another. We can't talk about okay. the negative side or the positive side. We got to talk about the middle. We got to talk about okay. what are people today. What I'm talking about, I can't tell you what to talk about. What I'd like to talk about is what the average person will do. I want to give advice that is going to affect the majority of people. I don't want to give advice that's only going to affect the few people because I care about helping people. That's actually my goal. And I hear what you're saying that, that, that people have, you said it, I agree with you, people have intrinsic value. I'm saying, what do we do with that? I'm saying I don't advocate for any, I have daughters, I'm raising daughters. I don't advocate for any young lady who, who graduated high school in the last five years to plan to be a stay-at-home mother because I'm asking a simple question. I don't After that you either. got the child off to, oh, okay, so, all right, so we agree then. Oh, that's because after you got the child off to school in, 2000, in 2027, no, no, no. what are you going to do with your life? I understand. Okay, so I'm I mean, happy I, to say we agree, Miss Lady. I'm happy I'm to say saying, we agree. Yeah. Because okay, I feel like this is my, this is my point. Both parties should be professionals. You should have your own, not for your husband. You don't need a degree for your husband. You don't need a degree for your children. You need a degree for yourself. A degree or, or a profession is something, a commitment for yourself. You, We are all defined by what we do. When you meet someone on the street or when you meet someone, it's like, what do you do? It means something. And to say I'm a stay-at-home mother means, in most people's mind, that you're lazy. You can't get around it. Yes, it's hard to take care of kids, no, but it's not no. nearly as hard to take care All of right, kids Ms. Lady, today as it used to be. 
All right. But if you say I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm a teacher, it means that you committed to something. Hello. 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 This one I'm going to do. Bye. Next caller. Um, call it open line. Who's this? Hey, good evening, guests, wait, ladies, wait, be, be, gentlemen. Be, 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 before, before, you, before you say some GG, Miss Lady, you're very combative when it comes Gary, to these. Yeah, Gary, yeah, don't know. do it. Oh, no, sh sh please. You've been very combative with a few of my guests. The topic is what you bring to the motherfucking table. That's the topic. Now, Paco has laid out, and you have clear told some story of the very motherfucking few. We're talking about the middle, the average. Because most people in America are fucking average. So if you have a certain issue with the question and the answer, I have no answer for you, sweetie. To see this say bye, like you're doing something, is a very much an insult to tonight's stream. We have a clear, cultural fucking conversation. Don't get me motherfucking pissed tonight with this bullshit. I let you talk and run your fucking mouth for a good length of time. It'll stop you. Cut you off. You do this every motherfucking time. So when you call my motherfucking show, please be respectful, oh. please. Thank you. Now, ask your question, Gigi. And I'll put it down because I am not gonna, I'm not going to play with this bullshit. Okay. Go ahead. Ask your question, Gigi. Okay. Hello, everyone. I would like to ask the guest. And anybody, I guess, but especially males, other than um, financial, quote unquote, stability and brute strength, would you like to mention tangibles that men bring to the table? I'm not talking about Absolutely. the job. Absolutely, I'm ready to answer that. Okay, I'm done. No, I didn't want to cut you off. I just want you to know I'm ready to answer. Okay, cool. Go ahead. So, thanks. So, good evening. Thank you for your question. So I don't have a, a list of things. I don't have a list of, of tangibles that men bring because I don't believe that I'm a feminist. So I don't believe I, so I would say I believe in gender equality. I already spoke about how African-American females are leading in, in entrepreneurship in 2021. So I feel like we all need to bring certain tangibles. For example, I keep using the work analogy because my book is about business principles in romance. If we go to a job and we're applying for the same job, man or woman, we have to bring the same benefits. In the same way, we're applying for a job and when we're dating. When I'm trying to date you or you're trying to date me, I'm applying for the job to be your full-time dating partner, and you should be applying for that same job. As a matter of fact, we need to agree on what we're applying for. And so we need to bring the same things to the table. We both need to be financially stable. We both need to have a similar level of education or, on, or intelligence because if one of us is, let's just say, a rocket scientist and the other one is a uh, elementary school teacher, we might miss each other. I might be speaking over your head or let's say you're the rocket scientist, you're the lady, you're the rocket scientist, you're speaking over my head. And so that's not going to make for very comfortable alone time. That's going to make our intangible, our, our special time very uncomfortable for at least one of us or if, if not both of us, because we're not even speaking on the same level. So, so I'm saying that we need to bring similar things to the table. We have to have similar intelligence. We have to have, I say, everyone has to be able to handle their own business. I don't care if you have one baby daddy, two baby daddy, three baby daddy. That's not important to me. What I care about is how are you managing those baby daddies? Are, are your baby daddies running amok, giving you hell? not paying child support, if I date you, am I coming into a situation where I have to now sponsor three children that I haven't fathered? Or am I coming into a situation where your three baby daddies are all taking the kids 50% of the time, the children are grown, and you really have time for a romantic relationship? Those two things are totally different. Those things matter. And vice versa. Lady, you should be looking out. Is the man you're dating, does he have three kids? Does he have baby mama drama? Or is he managing his children? Well, does he have set time where he's going to say to you, you and I can't date. You and I will not be seeing each other this time because I've committed it to taking care of my children. That matters. So what we bring to the table isn't male or female or oriented. It's based on 
quality of a human being. And dating is supposed to expose the quality of human being that you're getting in bed with. It shouldn't be, I'm just taking whoever I get. It should be, I have an understanding of myself, personal responsibility. I have an understanding of myself and what I need, but more importantly, what I can bring. What I need is only exposed once I know what I bring. Okay. If, I'm, if I don't know what I bring, then I need everything and I'm just dead weight and no one should date me. If I can't tell you what I can do for you, then that means everything I could possibly need you have to bring to the table. And that's insulting to the other person. I should come out with my hands open saying, this is what I do, this is what I do, this is what I do. And you're going to say, oh, well, I do something opposite of that. And therein lies the compatibility. Your strengths are my weaknesses. My strengths are your weaknesses. We meet in the middle. We, we, we talk about the overlap. Does that answer your question, ma'am? Um, pretty much, but not completely. I guess I will ask, answer my own question. What I would say is, as far as men are concerned, and as far as a woman looking for a good man to be a husband and a father, I think his intangibles should be listed also, because we basically know what the um, intangibles are for women. But I would also like to say that a man who may not make a lot of money, but He's extremely trustworthy. He's an excellent role model. He is the spiritual head of the household. He is um, very, very uh, patient with anybody's children, whether they're his or hers or anybody else's. And to have someone that you can count on. And, and, and one other thing, who is able to love in a normal manner, because romantic love is kind of silly, but they know how to love that marriage and love those children and love that family through thick and thin. So I would say besides his money and his status and his title, a good man is a good man, and that's something that you can't, you can't pay for. I'm done. I appreciate your comment, and I, again, I, I'm happy to say I agree, but I feel like I may not have been clear. My point is that as a feminist, the black male feminist, hashtag follow me, mm -hmm. at Dr. Black, I keep saying gender equality because everything you said that the man needs to bring, I'm saying that the man, I agree with you, he needs to bring, and the woman has to bring. The man doesn't have to have any more patience than the woman does. The man doesn't need to have any more understanding or love or, or dedication or commitment or, or timeliness than the woman does. These are human traits. This does not have nothing to do with being a man. I can't be all those things as a man and have a woman who doesn't have those things. Facts. I can't always be on time and my wife always be late. We're late. <laughs> or oh, I'm not going with her, right? <laughs> right? Right? Right, right. I can't, I can't be patient with my wife and she be short-tempered with me. Yeah, that's vice versa. She can't be patient with me and I'll be short tempered with her. And a lot of people have been trying to do this and failing at it for thousands of years. There is a balance. The universe is balanced and those who are most successful are close to that balance. There is a balance. Each person has to come with the self-respect and, and the self-love and the understanding of self to be compatible in the relationship. If you're just looking at the other person, you're, you're, you're wasting everyone's time. You have to first look at yourself and the other person is a compliment to you or hopefully you'll find out very early on if they're not a compliment to you so you're not in the relationship. But you can't be in the relationship and not complimenting each other and then asking questions. There's no more questions to ask. You're not complimenting each other. Once you establish that, once you see that, you need to move on and find a compliment. But you'll never find a compliment. The word compliment means has inherent in the definition of compliment, self-understanding. You have to understand yourself before any compliment can occur. And we don't mean compliment like saying something nice. We mean compliment like in addition to. There cannot be in addition to without the first understanding of self. And so all of us, men and women, have the same responsibilities, even if we don't have the same skills or talents or money 
or vision, we still have the same responsibility to be productive in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get it. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you, Gigi. And Mr. Black, I'm looking at the chat room. I'm saying some things. Um, I'm going to read you some. One by the person I think is called me. I don't know if that's what it is. It said, this man wants the woman to bring money to the relationship. Then me goes again. Oh, no, my father, that's E. Yeah, E he says that. East Coast. Then me says, Kevin Cross. Oh, I don't know what that is. Um, me says, he has not had a suspension nor a I think it's from Kevin Samuels, but I don't know what he has to do in the equation, but. Yeah, chat room's kind of weird, but yeah, I was reading what I'm seeing in the chat room. Well, I, I'll tell you, for anyone who wants to know, I have a successful marriage. It's not the, I don't have a very long marriage, but I have a successful marriage. In my marriage, there's been times where I've earned more than my wife, and there's been times where my wife earns more than I do. Mm-hmm. Currently, I only have two bills. So for anybody who wants to know, for Christmas, I bought my wife a new Porsche. But the reason I could buy my wife a new Porsche for Christmas is because I only have two bills. So the way my wife and I established it is we split our, we took our total expenses and we split them down the middle. And I said, if you would allow me as a man, because many times I've been overseas making more, I'm going to pay the most expensive bills. And you, if it's all right with you, you can pay the utilities because you're always at home. You always need to make sure that they're on. If I'm here or not, it's irrelevant. You still need to have them. And so, with only having two bills, we both now have a lot of disposable income, and I like to spend my money on my wife and my girls because my love language is gift giving, and so I like to give to my wife. And so I'm telling people that you could have the same level of, of success in your relationship if you find someone compatible. I didn't go and pick up a girl at the bar who works at the bar and then say, I'm working overseas making six figures uh, uh, every year and I want this big house and I want these fancy cars and you need to figure out how to get on my level. That will be absurd. What I did is what I'm advocating for other people to do. I dated the girl who graduated college with me. My wife and I graduated college one in front of the other. And I dated the girl who after she got out of college, get a better job, get a better job, get a better job. And I saw, I saw her commitment, her professionalism, her, her, her abilities, her skills. Then I watched her while she's working. My wife currently works for NASA, and she saw the same things in me. So we got to, we, we, were, we were evaluating each other while we were dating. We established the things that we want. We both want a certain level of uh, uh, living, and we're living it together, and we're also splitting it evenly. So if I have to have a woman who makes money. I would never, as a man who works overseas, I've met a lot of men who go and date women from other countries, and we talk about it. In the chat, the manuscript is always talking about getting a girl from another country. And a lot of men are saying, hey, I'll get a girl from another country because they should cook and clean. And more power to you if you find a woman who cooks and clean valuable. I don't. I'll pay a maid $100, $200 a week and her, you know, come and clean and be out. I wouldn't date a maid. But if you want to get you a farm girl from another country because she cooks and clean and wait on your hand and foot, that's more power to you. I would never, and I've said this before, I would never pass up on a good American girl with a great education college or not, with the earning potential, American women have the highest earning potential of women all around the world. I wouldn't trade in the number one earning potential in the world for the number 200 earning potential just because she's going to stay at home and cook and clean. That makes no sense to me because my wife making money frees up my money. And, I'm, and only men who make money understand this. If your partner makes money, they free up your money. What you do with your money is your business. But you don't have a choice if she doesn't make any money. You have to pay all the bills. You have to take her on a trip. You have to give her money for her nails and stuff. I don't have to do any of that for my wife. I do it because I want to. And I'm at peace with that because I choose it for myself. People out here struggling want to get a, you know, a lot of men have a, a midlife crisis. And for the baby boomers, they go out and buy themselves a new Corvette. And say, so what is going on with this midlife crisis? Well, those men were saying that for, for 30, 40 years, they had to give up all their salary for the kids to go to high school and their sports and then college and refund that house. They never got anything. And all of a sudden, one of them just snapped and went and bought a Corvette. Guess what's never going to happen to me? I'm never going to have a midlife crisis like that because my wife allows my needs to be addressed today. 
I don't have to wait 15 years for my needs to be addressed. I don't have to wait for my wants. It's not even needs all the time, right? My wants. A man who wants a Corvette at 20 should be able to get that Corvette 20, 30. And it's not if he gets it the first day, but if him and his wife both are earning a reasonable salary, they can budget for it and save up for it and not have to have one day when he's 52 just break down and go out and buy it and, and, and throw, his, you know, throw things away and, and damage the relationship because he just did something on a whim. There are solutions. There's benefits to planning and having a compatible partner, and I'm living those benefits, and I encourage other people to. I'm sure other people will have them and do have them that plan. But y'all out here getting knocked up by some random at the club or knocking up some thoughts, and then crying about how you got to pay child support makes no sense to me. Protect yourself and you won't have those issues. All right. Talk Make better decisions, that. you won't have those issues. All right. We have another person that raised a hand. Let me see what this is. All right. Call or open your line. Who's this? Hey, what's happening, man? It's uh, ABC. Damn, ABC. Your line is clear as hell. Damn. I wish you I got it that clear. Call. Very clear. It sounds smooth. Like you, you must make some of making that TRS money, man. Putting it to your little production, man. You step it no, up, actually, bro. I got, actually, I'm on Wi-Fi and it's usually scratchy, so I was wondering if it sounded all right. Okay. Anyway, but uh, I just wanted to say to the guests, you know, um, a couple of things. Um, I think I heard him before. I heard him say he's a feminist. And uh, that's always kind of curious to me. And then I just heard him talk about um, how he 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 asked the wife if she would allow him to pay the bigger bills, and uh, she paid the smaller bills. Um, I I just like to ask him, what's the difference between uh, a man and a woman? Is it just the physical thing? Is it? Yeah, I don't. I. I I'll tell you right now that there, there's, there's very small physical differences between a man and a woman. Uh, if you look at us genetically, if you look at just the, the history, the, excuse me, if you look at how things are in society today, there's, there's, there's almost, there's literally no job that a, that a woman can't do that a man can do. So I, I, for people who are saying that there's differences, they'd have to tell me because I'm not familiar with these, these, these differences, you know, there's stereotypical differences. There are people who say that, and, and it's true. The one stereotype that has a lot of truth is that men are physically stronger than women. But in our society today, we weren't born in a time where we're out here building farms left and right or building huts with our hands. I don't know anyone who's literally built their own home. So in our yeah, society, that, that don't, that don't exist day, no more. They don't exist, right? In our society and current day, physical strength is not relevant, right? Physical strength isn't relevant. Yes, you're stronger than your lady. At least hopefully that many people, most men are. But what does that matter? How is that going to help you get a job? How is that going to help you get money? How is that going to help you take care of yourself? Everyone's carrying a gun in the United States. So does it matter? No, we ain't even fighting no more, right? You're just getting shot. So a woman can shoot you just as fast as a man can shoot you. So I'm, I'm really not familiar with any practical differences between men and women. I do know that, that both men and women can achieve, and I'm looking for, I look for, I pick a partner who has the same uh, ability to achieve, us, proven ability to achieve as I did, because I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to stay on a high level. And I feel like a lot of men are, are getting these women who, who can't meet their level and being angry with those women. And I'm like, it wouldn't it just be better for you to just get a woman who could be on your level instead of being angry at the woman who can't be on your level? Okay, well, so, you know, you talked about the physical differences, and you said there's very little physical differences. So I guess then mental, there's no mental differences. There, you know, if, there's the physical If there is mental differences, the, sir, the mental differences, women are, 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 are vastly superior to men mentally if there are any mental differences if you look at any and you could check me out if you don't believe this you could check any level of education any school that has men and women and you can see that on every single level of education from elementary school to any graduate degree you can pick women graduate at higher rates than men women attend at higher rates than men women have higher uh, um, um, scores overall scores than men so if there are any <laughs> any uh, mental differences, the women are superior, but as a man, I'd rather not 
point that out. Okay. Is that what you're saying, that women are mentally superior to men? Because that's what the evidence shows. No, I I, I didn't get to finish saying anything because you jumped in there. My my point is that I think we're different. You know, I think we're physically different. I think, and and I say mental, but what I mean is, you know, emotional, mental, uh, and and I don't mean intelligence. And and I'll just say this. This is where I think we differ. And, you know, people are different. So, you know, you have your way. I have my way. People people are different. But uh, I think that women are more emotional. I think that uh, us guys are more direct and, uh, I don't know, like, I I say logical. Look, men have emotion. Women are logical. All right? So that's stupid. Ain't ain't nobody talking about one doesn't have the other. Uh, Just like men have some feminine characteristics and women have some masculine characteristics. But what we're talking about, like you were speaking with Miss Lady, the average, on average, women are more emotional than men. And and I think that what we do is just a yin and a yang and we complement each other. What I hear you saying is that it ain't a yin and a yang. It's two yings or two yangs. Ain't no difference. And you, from what you said, when you speak with your wife, you know, it's like, hey, honey, uh, will you allow me to do this? Or I'll allow you to do that. You know, it's a business partnership. And if that's what somebody wants, that's fine. You know, uh, one more thing was you talked about the children. And you said, you know, once they get five years old, they're in school and they don't really need, uh, you know, what's she doing all day and all this kind of stuff. Um, We look at it different about how we raise our kids. The world is so complicated and, and the kids are so overwhelmed with all this information. You know, just dropping them off at school and then coming home and, you know, it's not like they they don't need a lot of time or something. We just see stuff differently. You know, I think uh, children need a whole lot of uh, care, guidance, supervision, uh, particularly in the, day, in the world today. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's a value system, what you value. I heard you said that you bought your wife a Porsche or she buys you something. So it sounds like there's a lot of materialism in there. But if that's what you're about, that's what you're about. You know, I'm, I'm just putting it out there that there are people that see things differently than what you're saying. So it's just kind of curious to me. I appreciate your point. And, I, and I, I mean, it's inherent that people see things differently. And, I, of course, I respect a person's right to have different views. Hopefully, not, not all views are respectable views. But I do respect anyone's right because I don't have a choice that people have different views. If I can clarify a few things, I don't like in a capitalistic country for people to pretend like money doesn't matter. I feel like it's a cop-out. Uh, you know, you say, not, not just you, but a lot of people say, oh, when you mention what you've done for your wife, you know, oh, you, you're materialistic. This is nonsense. The United States of America is the most capitalistic country in the world, and we mm-hmm. all have to pay a lot for everything. So we over here pretending yeah. like, oh, money doesn't matter. You, you're, you're not telling the truth, and you're not being honest. And so I'm going to respect a honest conversation, I'm not going to respect the, uh, and anyone trying to lie to me about how important money is, I'm not buying it. Now, you can say that, and you can even mean, maybe mean it, but when you out here struggling to pay your bills, the proof is in the pudding. You know what I'm saying? you got to be about your money. I don't care how you personally feel, you just have to be about your money. And, you, and, and part of raising your children, your children are free. Miss Lady was mentioning that you got to spend a lot of money on, 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 on the kids, well, you really got to, excuse me, on the, on the partner, but you really got to spend the money on kids. Those kids cost you uh, uh, two, three hundred thousand dollars to get them from, shoot, you can spend fifty thousand dollars just to, just to have, just to give birth. So when people tell me it's not about money, well, what is it about? Because you got to pay that hospital bill to give birth. You're not giving birth in the tub. You didn't build your house. So it costs, excuse me, money to get that house. You're renting because you can't afford to buy. You're paying student loans. You're struggling to pay student loans. You're not paying your student loans because you can't pay them. Like, let's stop having this, this statement about how important money is. Money is everything, whether you like it or not. Those of yeah. us are out here working to make sure that we handle it, and there's people avoiding it. You can avoid it, and that's your business. But let's not pretend like it's not the thing. We all wish we were Jay-Z and Beyonce, every single one of us. Not because we want to be rappers or singers, but because we want to know that our great grandchildren have all the money they'll ever need. We all want to be like, 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 uh, like Bill Gates, or we all want to be like we we know 
I, I'm not knocking what you said. I'm just making a statement no, in no, reference no. to I'm not something you like suggested. That. But I, I, but I think you might have misunderstood because you're talking about how we all need money. Absolutely, one thousand okay. percent, one hundred thousand okay. percent. We all are. I think everybody on here, one hundred percent, will agree that you need money. That money is necessary. I, there's no disagreement. Cool. The the the, the, the okay. point with the money that I brought up was you said you bought your wife a Porsche. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. But it had to be a Porsche. It couldn't be a Corolla or something. Now, I ain't saying it had to be, but that's what you Yeah. Mean. You know, can I tell you why it was a Porsche, though? So, so can I tell you why it was a Porsche? So, so when I brought that's it, her dream car, and that's what she wanted. I didn't get myself a car. I got her, her dream car. That's, that's why right. it had to uh, be a Porsche. I'm saying, you know, you went on talking about how, you know, anybody that said money ain't important. Uh, I want to be clear. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm just saying that, you know, people have different value systems. And where one person might say you need $200,000 to raise your kid to be however long or something, somebody else like me might say, well, you know, not necessarily. I mean, I didn't. we don't have a... I'm retired now. We never had a real big house and all this kind of stuff. We had a three-bedroom home. It was in a decent neighborhood. Uh, you know, kids got along. They had student loans. We helped them to pay it off. Uh, but I never made a whole lot of money. And, and my wife was a stay-at-home uh, mother. And, and I hate this anecdotal stuff. But I'm saying that, you know, I can speak from experience. And I, people around me uh, that, that, that did it. It's about budgeting your money and not being able to get that Porsche. You know, I couldn't afford it like you could. The, the, that's where my family was. We never, we never could afford that. I never bought a new car. We couldn't afford it. So, you know, I was never in this spot that you were in financially. But the point is that we still were able to have a decent life and this kind of thing. So it's about what we value. I, I, you know, I, I, I definitely you agree it. with you, though. I don't think that you value life less. I don't look down on the fact that you make different choices. But I'm advocating for the largest group of people. And I'm thinking about, this is objective thinking, about the most successful, the most people. I'm not pointing to you, and I'm not saying there's something wrong with you. I know you're not accusing me of that, but I just want to make that clear. I'm not looking at one individual. I'm looking at the most people. I'm looking at, let's say, you and I would have the opportunity to go speak to an audience of high school students, and we want to give them advice that will help them to be better in the future. I'm giving advice. I'm saying that this advice is going to allow you to be better if you focus on certain important factors that I learned from previous generations. You sound like you're slightly older than me. I'm not going to say how much older because you said you're retired. I'm not retired yet. So I'm saying if I'm talking to a high school student today about relationships, these are important things I say. You have to be about your money because your relationship is going to cost whether you like it or not. What level you choose, if you choose middle class, lower middle class, or upper middle class, your preparation should be for the highest level, and then you make the choices in between because you know what you're not going to do. You're not going to prepare for lower middle class and stumble into upper middle class. But you can prepare for upper middle class or being wealthy and live a, a, a lower middle class life. Warren Buffett himself has lived in the same house for all the years he's been a billionaire. He prepared for extreme wealth and chooses to live on the level that he wants. And so if we're going to give advice, if we're going to care about the people we're talking to about doing better, then we have to look at it that way. That's why I don't have to knock you to, but while at saying 100%. you got to be about your money. What you do with your money is your business, but you got to be about getting it. Most people, I think we all can admit, aren't able to get it. That's their issue. It's not what they do with it yet. They ain't even gotten it yet. Is that true? Or maybe they mismanage. Wouldn't you agree? Maybe they mismanage it. Some of them mismanage it, but, but mismanaging it, is a lot of it is they don't have enough of it. I mean, we talk about it in politics every day. Every single day they're on the news talking about how the politicians are failing to help us. The counseling student loan, Biden needs to cancel student loans. Uh, uh, people people need to try to get checks from the government because of COVID. Da, 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 da. This, this, this money thing matters. How much you have matters. It matters a lot in our states of America. You spend two hundred dollars on gym shoes. Do you think that that? I, I, it only matters if you don't have the two hundred dollars. For me, for me, it doesn't matter because I got it, and a lot of other people right, got right, it. Right, but if, but, 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 average, but right? you're right. You talk about magic. That's right. If you don't have it. If you don't have it, yeah, it matters. It, it, or it's not that you don't have it; you clearly have it. It, 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 it. Are you are you are you not taking care of something more important and buying those gym shoes? 
And we can say that about a lot of things. Some people out here buying Bitcoin. They're buying Bitcoin. They're buying Bitcoin, they're buying Bitcoin and licking their rent. We're talking about the average person, right? We're talking about the average. So I am. We can just put a dollar amount. Maybe we say the the average family income is fifty thousand. Fifty thousand a year. Yeah, yeah. Fifty thousand a year. So, so mm -hmm. when we talk, when we look at a lot of these younger kids that maybe are lower income and all this stuff, they have the nice uh, shoes. Is that an issue with money management? Do you think? Uh, no, not necessarily, because you can you can budget for anything. And so uh, chaos had me on earlier when we talked about finances. You can budget for anything. I didn't I didn't buy the brand new Porsche five years ago. I had to build to it. Same way someone may want the new Jordans that are coming out next month. They could have been saving for it for the last two months. The only issue comes up is when you go buy those Jordans, but your rent isn't paid, your gas isn't paid, your student loans aren't paid. Yeah, you know, priorities. It's all about, it's all about all your priority, it's priority. Because the money is there. You're in the richest country in the world. People have money. People have access to money. We're not in the Philippines where no one has new Jordans because no one could afford it. No, Americans can afford it. Clearly, Jordan sales are great. The question is, what are you, what else do you need to do? Are you meeting your priorities? Are you mismanaging your money? But that is all included in how important getting your money is. If you're getting your money, you manage it differently. Jay-Z and Beyonce can get Jordans every day for the rest of their natural life and not miss a beat because that's just off the, that's that's less than a millionth of their interest on what they're making. And that's just reality. So so I'm saying that in my relationship, I'm able to budget for things because I have a wife that makes money. This is my ultimate point. I have a wife that makes money. It opens up my ability to acquire things that I need. We get real, real, real IRA. Real we're getting we're getting multiple real estate. We're getting mm. we are not living on on one salary of mine and I'm the man and she's taking care of the kids. No, we are planning vacations for the whole family. And everyone mm. wants that. So we're not yeah. acting like, oh, we, no one wants that. Everyone wants a vacation with the family. The question is, how did you start your relationship? Did you start your relationship with someone who only graduated high school, told your woman to stay home and take care of the kids, and instead of her helping you pay for the life you want, you're just complaining about not having the life that you want? Mm -hmm. No one should be a stay-at-home wife their whole life these days. No one. Kids are too expensive. 50 years ago, you might have got away with it. Hey, we ate so the baby, think, talk you. less. Today, let you can't just... afford it. Let me now, now, wait, 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 wait. Before you get to ABC, because I want to wind this down. If you have any further questions, go ahead now, ABC. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to get make this last statement. I agree with you about the importance of uh, selecting a partner and being on the same page. Uh, that's very important. Uh, the same value system is very important. I think Miss Lady attempted to talk about that. I think those things are important. And as long as you two are on the same page that way, and you can make things happen. And money is necessary, but, uh, you know, how much you focus on it, how, how much you value it in your relationship, that's up to you as a, as a, a group. But, you know, if you're on the same page, y'all can support each other and you'll work it out. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you for your call. I, I agree with you. We, we mostly agree. I, I hope you leave recognizing that we mostly agree. All right, thank you, ABC. We're going to soon wind this down now, Paco. Uh, one thing yes, before sir. I wind Let's it down. Wind it down. Yeah, I got to wind this down because I want to give you time to rest for where we are to do for next morning. Um, let me go for the chat room. And I'm not sure who this person named me. It must be a woman. But let me read the comments because I think she finds or he or she finds offense of your message. Comment here. Let me see. Um, me. It says, more emotion than... Oh, well, let me go now. All right. Some men have a tendency to get upset at women. Um, me keep saying he bought a Porsche. Material resource bought the Porsche. Intelligence, independence, that's E. And, you know, for some reason... Oh, this is what I found with me. This is the person. Me comments. This is misguided listening to him. Me says not comment his money his wife money and v they both bought a porsche me again it says his money is not 
his alone in marriage, and neither is his wife. Me again. Black women are divesting as they don't want to deal with black so-called men problems and issues too risky. Me again. Me and the old bearing attitudes and too much talking will wear a woman out if a man talks on and on. Then me again says he wants the woman to bring as much resource as the man. This means women will have to, I guess, divest because the woman has more resource and education than the average black man. Um, so I guess I guess it's a woman that's writing the, the so let me chat. let me let me comment because some of those are pretty useful to what we're talking about. So yeah. let me clarify something. Again, my wife and I both graduated college together and like I said also in case people missed it, there's been times where she made more money than I did. currently this month, um my wife makes more money than me, even though last year and some of the previous year I made more than her. So now I'm not in Afghanistan making that overseas money. My yeah. US job doesn't pay as much, but my wife's NASA job pays more than my USA job. And 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 we haven't missed a single beat. And the reason we haven't missed a beat, the reason why even though I'm not in Afghanistan, I still bought my wife a Porsche for Christmas, is because my partner brings as much to the table as I do. And somebody said he wants his wife. Absolutely. And I think deep down inside, each of us want our partner to bring to the table as much as we do. Hence, back to the original question of the show, what do you bring to the table? You have exactly. to establish that you bring as much to the table. Now, this is an important caveat. For wealthy people, and I don't know if any people in, in, in this on this call are listening know wealthy people, but if you do ask them, if you're a wealthy person, let's say you're a trust fund baby, or you are one of these um, you know, wealthy people who, 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 who you started a startup and you're still dating because uh, of the top uh, of the top 50 billionaires, there's like 15 or 20 of them who are men who aren't yet married. Okay, so let's say you're a top 50 billionaire, you're unmarried. When you go on a date, somebody set you up with someone who they thought was valuable. When you go on a date, it's established you're a billionaire. You don't need money. The woman does not have to bring money to the table, so she has to bring something else other than money. And if you, as a woman in 2022, think that all you need to bring to the table, if he has all the money, is your vagina and your and your and your womb, you are a fool. <laughs> and that is the point that I'm trying to to beat into women's heads with my videos and with this whole topic. If in 2022 you think you can meet a man who has a, who's financially stable, who doesn't need your money, and all you're going to bring is your vagina and your womb. You're going to be out on the street. He's going to get rid of you, just like he would have any century prior. Because mm. if you think about previous centuries, the king had wives and concubines and the whole nine, right? Say he it had again. all of that. Repeat he had because the woman, because his wife, his his queen that he married was a, 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 an arranged marriage, and you know she she didn't have a, much of a choice, but she didn't bring anything. She was like, you know, a treaty to make sure that they were peace. But she didn't bring anything. The king didn't need her, and he may or may not have loved her, and it was irrelevant. So if you ladies today want to keep, if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting the same result. If you want to be irrelevant and you want to marry a man with money where you have no say-so, good luck. I just don't want to hear you crying about it on social media. No one cares about it because you're making this choice to be useless, and then you're going to complain about it. And men out here doing similar things. These dudes out here dating these girls with a job, living in your girlfriend's house and, and, and living with her. And you got, you know, two baby mamas or whatever. And you out here and you just live with her. And she's telling you that you ass got to go out and, and, and wash her car. And you got to pick up her laundry and you complain about it. I'm supposed to be the man. If you're supposed to be the man, you better be paying some bills. You pay the exactly. cost to be the boss. Pay something. You pay, something. pay the cost to be the boss. You can't be living with your girl and telling her, about how you the man, you can't be driving her car and telling her how you the man. That's her car. That ain't your car. You ain't got a driver's license. So all y'all got this game messed up. When someone asks you what you bring to the table, you better have a long list. It is your personal responsibility to know what you bring to the table. It is your personal responsibility to make sure that what you bring to the table is valuable and useful and meaningful. You don't have to match every, the, the next person everything. If you are dating a wealthy person, you necessarily won't have as much money as them. But you better be the you better be the more educated one. Look at Mark Zuckerberg. 
Come on, y'all. Mark Zuckerberg is, is the what? Mm-hmm. Sixth richest man in the world? He yeah. married a doctor. She has yeah. a whole PhD. A whole PhD. Mm-hmm. You know why he didn't marry a daggone chick that is from McDonald's or working at a barista or, or who is a local elementary school teacher? Because when you're on that level, the intangibles are that much more important. They have to be that much more heightened. And y'all out here, not y'all, people on social media out here crying about not being accepted for their mediocrity. A great person or a person who has a lot of success will not accept your mediocrity. And that doesn't matter if they're rich or not. You could just be the best damn, um, um, you know, you might be a spelling me damn champion and you might be the highest. You could be summa cum laude in your city. You know, you're not known around the world, but you're summa cum laude in your city. And you're saying, I don't want to date the guy who works as a bartender. And you have every damn right to say that. And the dude as a bartender, you got to step your shit up or leave her alone. Stop whining about not being accepted for your mediocrity. If you got a bunch of kids and you mad that you can't find a partner, that's your fault. You should have had all them damn kids. No one has to take all your kids, man or woman. That's Mm -hmm. your problem. That's not nobody else's problem. Yeah. So we have to, we have to have standards and we got to hold other people to our standards. And ladies, so many of you, come on, I'm the black male feminist. I'm here for you. I'll support y'all. But mm-hmm. y'all got to stop whining about these losers. If you are harboring a loser, that's your damn problem. I don't care that you yep. living with a man in your house, driving your car, and he don't work. That's your problem. That's your fool ass. Especially but that man don't work. He's a genius. Mm-hmm. If he don't work. He's a genius because he got you suckered into babysitting him. You took on another. There's one of my new videos I'm about to do. Stop taking on dependents. You a grown adult. Why the hell are you harboring another dependent? What is that? You're not getting no tax breaks for him. What is this about? Do not take on another dependent. Find someone who has similar goals, who is headed in the direction that you're headed, and work with them or don't. We don't care. We don't give a shit. If you want to be with a loser, more power to you. Knock your damn self out. But we're not trying to hear all that crying. And one thing it's I want pathetic. to say, Paco, is America will allow you to be a loser. All day, every day. You can't All do that day, in, 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 in Trinidad. You cannot do that in Barbados. You cannot do that in Jamaica. You can't do it in Guyana. Sure and can't do it in, 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 in Jamaica. And you sure can't do that in Guyana. <laughs> you can't. You're going to be on the street. You're going to be living with your parents, and we're going to be clowning you. I mean, the Caribbean got this figured out. I don't understand how Americans are. Y'all have a hundred times more money. People talk about the poorest countries in the world. Haiti mm-hmm. is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere and the and, and the and the bottom five poorest countries in the world. Guyana is right there. We're in the mm-hmm. bottom ten poorest countries in the world. Everybody talk about Afghanistan is poor. I go to Afghanistan at work and I tell them people, I was born in a country just as poor as y'all, but the United States never came and gave us billions of dollars to build anything. We got this simple stuff figured out. If you harboring a dependent, a grown adult who acts like a child, that's on you, that is on man you. or woman. That's on you. Stop crying about it on social media. Ladies, it's your responsibility to be responsible for yourself and your action. There is no man out there that's going to hit you in the head that fell out the sky that's going to make your life perfect. You have to be working on making your life better. No man who is doing well wants another dependent. Men inherently understand this. Women, y'all got to get with the program. Mm-hmm. And if a man's taking care of his business and he adopts you and you're not about nothing, guess what that means? You're not getting no respect. You bringing money, skills, talent to the table is also your respect. Mm-hmm. You're bringing respect. You're bringing a level of, of demand of respect. It's the same way you demand a certain salary when you get certain skills. You demand, ladies, you demand a certain level of respect in a relationship when you bring certain skills. When you don't bring those skills, you're a side chick, a perpetual side chick. You're still waiting for him to ask you to marry you. Why? No, because so you it, came into a relationship. Tell him, tell him, K.O. Well, 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 it's, 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 it's better. It's better. It's better. I'm going to name this off Red Supreme. You are side booty at best. At best. Yeah. At best. No how you, you, you know, you know, and here's the funny thing. You know, we always hear about these stories about these sugar babies and how they're living with lavish. Sugar babies. I, 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 I'll <laughs> tell you this. I'll tell you this. Come check me in 10 years, baby, after your 20s or when you're in your 30s. See how much you're leverage. Because let me tell you something. The men you deal with now, these are old money. But this new generation coming, they're not going to be no sugar baby not having it. in the 21st. Let not me tell you something. I, 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 I'm projecting in the 21st century now, we're in the first generation, 
that if you think you're going to be sugar your baby yourself out in this new century, you're sadly mistaken. I don't give a fuck if you say you're going to be that. sadly mistaken because guess what? Time. Guess what we traded in, bro? We traded in sugar baby for thoughts. Look at Drake. Perfect example. Mm. He don't keep them. If you look at, if y'all remember the Clippers, the owner of the Clippers had this very famous sugar baby who exposed yeah. him as a rapist and made him lose his team. Because back in the day, in the end of the great generation, the baby boomer generation, that was the thing. He had a wife, but he had a couple sugar babies on the side. He bought her a Porsche. He bought yeah. her a Bentley. He bought yeah. her a whole house. And she still exposed him. And guess what the men of this generation figured out? Sugar babies are useless. Why do I need a, why do I need a full-time paid sugar baby? I'm just going to have me a couple of thoughts, and I rotate them like, like clothes. I just get them like I get new uniforms. So y'all ladies out here who are aspiring sugar babies, y'all better have a better backup plan. Listen, to get that sugar baby stuff, girl, get you your degree, get your own money, and keep your respect. Self-respect. Because if you plan on being a sugar baby, you, you gonna be, it's going to be hard to find a, a, a sugar daddy. Sugar daddies are a dime a dozen, bro. They, they're not even a dime, but they're, they're, part of, they're, they're hard to come by now. Yes, men are tricking, but men aren't tricking nearly as long as they used to. Ain't no dude putting you up in no crib and buying you no cars no more. Mm. He might take you on a trip. And guess what? You got a trip. <laughs> and if you're smart, you only got a trip and you ain't got a baby. Because if you got a trip and you ain't got and you got a baby, now you crying about child support. And remember, when you cry about child support, that means you're not getting that child support. So you're supporting that baby by yourself. Was that trip really worth it? He might have bought you a Birkin bag. Are you going to sell that Birkin bag? How many, how many months of child support is a Birkin bag, bro? Shit, I don't even know. Do that the, average right, the average right now of child support in America is under four hundred dollars. I think now it is down to three hundred. That's my check. I could be wrong. Mm. With but so, so you might but, get a year or two out of child support out of one Birkin bag. <laughs> mm -hmm. You get like three years of child support. I hope it's worth it. But but one thing, let me read worth this. It. Let me let me read this other comment, and I'm gonna take one last call because somebody raised hand. This is the same comment by the person they meet. He wants the woman to show the fifty percent of the financial responsibility, but he cannot be pregnant. And go through labor and nurse a baby. Now, Paco, do you I can nurse a baby. I can nurse a baby. I can't be pregnant. I can't go through labor. But I can nurse a baby. I'm a I'm a father. My daughter's 21 years old. I can mm -hmm. absolutely nurse a baby. My daughter was beautiful. She woke up every three and a half hours on the dot. I know most babies don't do that. I was very lucky, but yes. don't get it messed up. I can nurse a baby. I can nurse many children. I am. I am. I actually had my first baby. My niece was born when I was like uh, 12 years old. I've, mm -hmm. had, I've had kids my whole life. I'm from a Caribbean West country. Thing, we, you know? we do family raising, okay? We don't leave people just alone. So I've been mm -hmm. raising people. So, so mm -hmm. I have a woman who brings money to the table because I bring all of the traditional female skills to the table. I cook. I clean. I currently clean. My wife has picked up a hobby in the new year of cooking. My wife hasn't washed a dish in and maybe she loves it. three, four months. And I love it, too. Her cooking is great. She trying new recipes, but she didn't have to ask me to wash the dishes. Because she picked up cooking, I picked up all the dishwashing responsibilities. I don't have to cook. She didn't have to wash the dishes. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I knew how to do that before I met her. I didn't meet her, and she didn't teach me how to wash dishes. I didn't meet her, and she didn't teach me how to iron. If my wife needs some clothes ironed for work or going out, she's getting ready. She's doing her makeup for an hour. I'm ironing her clothes. Not because she forced me. But because we're a team, because I bring all the domesticated skills, every single one. So I say I will never get a farm girl from another country, a girl who can't make money, because I'm domesticated. I don't need nobody to, 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 to be domesticated for me. I don't need help from a woman to do any of that. Obviously, I can't have no babies. I cannot push a baby out. But outside of that, I could do everything a woman can do for a child, including nurturing. Absolutely. And I think all men should do that in the same way I think all women should have the earning skills that they have the ability to do, and they keep on looking for excuses not to do. I don't understand why. Do it. Get your money and be and be a great partner. Get your money, ladies, and be a, be a great partner. There's, there's no need to, to be waiting on a man to give you money. You might, be, right. you might make more money than him. What's wrong with that? Okay. Let me, let me take this last call, Paco. Caller? You're the final call. Who's uh, this? Uh, uh, is this Charles Flockner? Um, no. Is it, who is it, Jay? No. Yeah, I thought, I thought this was Charles Flockner. I was going to ask a question. Um, okay. No. Well, what, where's your Charles short Flockner. Where's I'm your Dr. question? Black. Yeah, this is Dr. Black. But what's your question, 
Jay. Yeah, I, I thought though he was running for city council. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, not 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 yet. Okay, 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 fine. But here's the thing though. Uh, yeah, I, I I do agree with you. Women need to, you know, women are capable rather to do X, Y, and Z. But when you said Everything. though, you you can do it all, right? Do you I chest can. feed a child? I, I, because like when when you said that, I'm like, wait a minute, you, you, you know, I mean, you, you know, know, I know, I could, that, Mr. Sir, I would I, that would be a good question if you if you were unaware that twenty five percent of women don't breastfeed. They use formulas. They don't even breastfeed at all. They use straight formulas. There are many millions of, of children born in the United States every year who never are breastfed. It's a big conversation in the medical field. My Half of them, the women in my family are in the medical field. Nurses, nurses, directors, uh, don't have any doctors, but they're in the medical field, uh, uh, midwives. So I'm very familiar with, with the research and the science on this. And every child is not breastfed. It is not 1304. It is 2,000. Like, 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 we, we said nursing. That drew. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, no, I'm no, like, no, 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 no. I meant nursing. Like, like, oh, okay. I get why you say that. I'm sorry. I meant like my baby yeah. mother. She would pump the milk into the bottle and set four or five bottles out for the night. But she wouldn't wake up. And that's understandable. She was with my, my daughter all day. So when I came to town from the military on the weekend, spend time with them, I would always be on, on, on baby duties. And most fathers who have children know this. So the mother will put the milk in the in the bottle. You put it in the bottle warmer. It warms up in 10 seconds. You feed it to the baby when she wakes up crying. And I was very lucky that my baby woke up every three and a half hours. So I didn't even have any tumultuous nights. I just woke up, gave her the bottle, and went back to sleep. I'm lucky. I know a lot of other mothers. My my uh, niece didn't have uh, didn't wake up on such a schedule. So when I meant nursing, I didn't mean from my chest. I meant from the milk that was set aside for me. And if I didn't have my baby mother, like a, a man who there's still infant mortality, Unfortunately, women die in in childbirth. Then you would have a formula that you would that you would get. So I can I can nurse. I meant nursing. I meant more nurturing than nursing. I misspoke. Thank you for calling. Oh, okay, uh, it, it, it's all it's all good, brother. It's all good. I I I I kind of misunderstood you when you said nursing. I thought wait a minute, but yeah, it's all good. Anyway, anyway, I'm gonna get off of here. Uh, uh, you know, congratulations for you and your family. That's all. You know, you you know you 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 your own man. Don't let nobody else, no, don't let some baby boomer try to tell you how to raise kids. You, you, your own man, you do your own thing. Don't let nobody else tell you how, 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 how to raise your own kids or create your own family. That's all I got to say because you, cause, cause like you got, cause you got jealous people who's in the chat room. So, so anyway, I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace you. I'm out. Thank, thank you for you, your comment. Thank you for your comment. And I would like to say I'm not a know-it-all. I've learned, obviously, my father. My mother and my father, y'all may not know, are still together 40, 48 years. My father taught me a lot. My mother taught me a lot. And uh, obviously the baby boomers uh, educated me. So I learned a lot. But my whole mm -hmm. point is to, to improve. I feel like when it comes to romance, romance is obsolete as we know it. And I hope that my book will bring a modern, updated view on romance. And if you allow me, Chaos, can I do my closing comments now? Um, wait, before we wrap this up, um, I was going to get a call number one more time, but I think I got all the calls for tonight's stream. So, um, I would say this is a very good stream. Um, any final remarks you want to leave for the people that's listening? Yes, I would like to leave final remarks. So, so my book is about taking, um, business principles and overlapping them in the romance where they, where they apply because business is one system that we all know that works. You don't have to like it, but we all either work or know someone who works, and we all use uh, understand business principles very well. Professionalism, when you say that, we all understand that to mean the same thing or similar things. And so I discovered in, in preparing myself for being a married man that the advice that I was getting about romance was, was out of touch, out of date. It didn't connect to who I was, who I was trying to be, and it didn't work for most people. The United States is over 50% divorce rate, speeding toward 60% divorce rate. And so in my search, I discovered some principles, and I and I do run my relationship, my romance like a business, 
And I found a woman who was accepting of that. Obviously, if my wife didn't accept that, it wouldn't work. And if you can't accept that, I understand. I respect that. That's okay if it doesn't work. I think it will work if you give it a chance. And I'm saying it will work. I'm confident that utilizing business principles and romance will work because it already works for us in business. Basically, business is the, is the environment where we, we are forced, where we force efficiency. I don't understand why we wouldn't want to force efficiency on romance because we're going to be with our partner. When you say you're going to get married for life, that means you're going to be with your partner longer than you will be with any employer. And if we are forcing efficiency for an employer that is more temporary, why not force efficiency for a partner who's supposed to be there for the rest of your life? Human beings are living up to 100 years old. You're going to be married for 40 to 80 years. Why not force the efficiency on that scenario as best you can instead of hoping for the best? When you're focused on love and romance, you're just hoping for the best. you got to focus on more than just love. you got to focus on practical, tangible principles that's going to give you the best possible outcome. And we know those, um, those, those principles come from business because we know that businesses work. The businesses that still survive are the ones that work. There's businesses that have been around longer than any human being is going to live. And if they could, you know, grow and, and improve and be better and be around for 100 to 150 years, then we got to take those lessons and, and, and try to be better for the 40 to 80 years that we're going to be married. So the, the key question was, what do you bring to the table? And, and many people, particularly women, were offended by that because, you know, my wife said that, that men use that comment to, to marginalize the woman or to try to find a to try to find a way to take advantage of the woman w without you know really appreciating what she brings but just but just trying to to trick her and so I understand if you feel tricked or if you're triggered by this phrase because someone has used it in a negative connotation for you I understand why you may not appreciate it but you should everyone should answer that question what do you bring to the table like you're on a job interview and you should approach dating like you're on a job interview. You should be applying for the position with that candidate and you should be trying to be the best candidate and you should have skills and talents that, that you know are going to be beneficial for, for that partner in general overall. And that should be the way you conduct your life. And, you, and, and, and to avoid it by saying, I'm not going to answer that. I'm not going to tell you what I bring to the table. You should just know is to, is to be, is to be, uh, is to be immature, is to be immature thinking, is to be immature in your conduct, is to just be immature. You should definitely, you should definitely know what you bring to the table, be proud of what you bring to the table, and aspire to be more. Aspire to bring more to the table every time you're asked the older you are, the better you should be getting. And so that's my comments. I really appreciate your chaos. Y'all follow me uh, at Dr. Black on TikTok, um, Twitter. Uh, IG and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you can have a conversation anytime you check out my videos if you don't like them let me know if you like them let me know share and mm -hmm. uh, we carry on the conversation some more yeah 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 Dr. Black and like I said this is another installment of you and me and hell this could be somewhat of a series we'll see you know at times yeah it hour. could be a series talking oh, about yeah. romance and finance yeah, I mean, you keep coming back to those two things, right? Yeah, Romance yeah. Violence. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a possibility now, but you know, like I said, I'm, the, the sky's limit, and things are possible. Um, like I said, I'm digesting it as I ask the questions and I learn as I grow. You know what I'm saying? And you know, hope you learn from what I present on my question or anything I put out. Um, and then they, as adults, we're all learning, and growing. Um, one thing to keep in mind: relationships are simple is how you as a person want what outcomes you're seeking on seeking a relationship or going as far as finding marriage. It all depends on you people, man and woman. If you're here just to F around, then F around. But be blunt and honest with that person, at least. Yes, God, sir, be okay. honest. God, be, and listen, listen, I, I know with most us as human beings, we don't want to be honest in our endeavors and keep it real with the opposite person because we're not going to get what we want. Then if that is the case, and if that's 
what is going to happen, then by all means, leave it on the table then. But at the end of the day, you know, transparency is the key. And I think the men that ask this question, they're in the right state of mind in life, actions, character, etc. It, they, they're entitled to ask that question. And as, if you're a woman, you should, you, should, you should not feel offended. Matthew, you should be ecstatic to notice that a man has not only stands, but he's seeking something. He's looking for something. You don't want to be around with a man and he doesn't know what the hell he wants. No, it's or he doesn't. Or he doesn't know. He doesn't know what you what you can bring because then again, he'd just be wasting your time, right? If he if yeah. he has no use for you, then why would you want to be with someone who has no use for you? Mm-hmm. Like you say, you should be ecstatic to say, "I bring this, that, and the third, and those things are going to be beneficial to you." Mm-hmm. Absolutely right, brother Chaos. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, when it comes to men and women in regards to the standards, my, this is my me, and I'm not saying, but this is what I'm gonna say. Your standards should be realistic. It should be just, fair, and something that is workable. If you can't come to my and be workable in your standards, depending on what your age, especially if you're older man, or you're, especially if you're older black I mean, woman, sorry, then by all means, you're going to start off where you start off. You get nothing. It's that simple. You know, people are reasonable. And you have to deal with trade-offs. And I think... One of the weaknesses with a lot of our people, we don't like to deal with trade-offs. And it's going to come to a point, you're going to have to trade off with somebody, each other, and make it work. Because let's be honest, 50% divorce rate, if people are getting married, and the marriage rate, especially in the black community, is only 30% or less now, that's not good. And it tells you that if we're not really getting married, that we just shack it up and it's doing some ill, legit things that we should not be doing. Because there's nothing really, really constructive building. Now, in regards to the main concern about that this woman could leave with half and break off with your building, then by all means, brother, you know, you, you didn't have nothing from the start. And if she decides that she doesn't want nothing to do and she wants to move on, by all means, let her move on. As much as our men don't want to let hear her that, move on. let her move on. But you see, you see, the problem with our men is what you do after when she decides she has to move on. Are you going to hang it up or are you going to go back out there in the field? The biggest billionaires that got the money. Still, no the risk. They still go out in the field. Hell, Dr. Dre might get married again. Don't be fooled that he say he won't. If he finds oh, right yeah. Man, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Absolutely. Because let's, and the reason why I say it is because he knows the risks and rewards, and he knows what he wants. And I guarantee you he's going to get it. So, like always, as a man, know what you want. Know what your standards are. Keep it realistic. And pursue it. Same for you ladies. Be realistic on your standards. And pursue it. And eventually try to find it as soon as possible. Because as we know, when we come about this clock thing with both men and women, in this earth, y'all don't have time to waste. And we waste too much time as a people. This, the, this is going to be the century of where the Negro is going to stand or black people going to stand in the next 30 years. Are there going to be most of us here? Or are we going to be more of a bleach out version of us? It's your decision. So keep that and meditate on that. I like thank everybody for listening to tonight's stream. I like to thank Dr. Black, as always, the special guest. We're going to do this again soon. If anyone comes to my cranium, you know where I can find you, Dr. Black. You know what I'm saying? I'm yes, always sir, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And, and like always, one yeah, one love. And always subscribe to his TikTok channel. He has some things on TikTok. And like always, subscribe to the Chaos Range channel. Hit the red button, top bell for uploads and live streams of the Chaos Range channel. Also, you can find me on Twitter, at Casserine7. And now, you can add me a friend on Facebook. Title, name, Eric Rain. It's on my page on YouTube. And also, subscribe to my Discord service. I'm trying to get Discord up so we can do some things on Discord. But on that, thank you for listening to tonight's broadcast. Until next time, take care and good night.